Hello, word nerds. Theme song, theme song that nobody has sent me. All right, the first word in this episode. Oh, you know, we got to say the things. Uh, please rate and review. Please go write a review if you are listening to this. I would appreciate that. Uh, you can email me at dictionarypod at gmail.com. I didn't want you to get confused by the all the ats. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, at dictionarypod. Mm, there is a Google Voice number where you can leave me a message, and I will listen to it, and then maybe the other people will get to listen to it if I put it in an episode. That's That's all for now. All right, the first word in this episode is cogency. C-O- G-E-N-C-Y, cogency, noun from 1667, the quality or state of being cogent. Well, what is cogent? You gotta wait a couple of words, maybe just one word. Because next is cogeneration, noun from 1976, the production of electricity using waste heat, as in steam, from an industrial process or the use of steam from electric power generation as a source of heat. So much information. Cogenerator is a noun. Next is cogent. Here's cogent. Mm, it's an adjective from 1659. One, having power to compel or constrain, as in cogent forces. To a, appealing, f- appealing forcibly to the mind or reason. Appealing forcibly to the mind or reason. Synonym is convincing, as in cogent evidence. To be, the synonyms are pertinent and relevant, as in a cogent analysis. And then another synonym for everything is the word valid. Cogently is an adverb. This is from the Latin verb cogere, or would it be cogere? Maybe cogere. And that means to drive together or collect. And that is from co plus agere, which means to drive. And there's more at the word agent. Next is cogitable. Cogitable. Yeah, that's a funky word for some reason. Cogitable. Adjective from the 15th century. Synonyms are conceivable and thinkable. It's incogitable. No, that's a stupid joke. Next is cogitate, verb from 1582, uh, starting with a uh, transitive verb. To ponder or meditate on usually intently, cogitate. I shall cogitate the definition of cogitate. And then intransitive says to meditate deeply or intently, as in cogitating on her career plans. Very smart. And then another, no, uh, just a synonym is the word think. I like to think. This is from the Latin cogitatus, from the verb cogitare or co- cogitare. Uh, that means to think or think about, from co plus agitare, which means to drive or agitate. Your driving is agitating me. Next is cogitation, noun from the 13th century. 1A, the act of cogitating, and the synonym is meditation. I I was in a really good habit of meditating once a day. I should be doing it twice. I was doing it once a day, and then I got out of practice. I got out of the habit, and then just the last couple of days, I, uh, I meditated both mornings, I think. Yep, both mornings, but then today I didn't. Um, I just, I've just been busy, so maybe tomorrow I'll, I'll find the time to do it, but I really need to get back into this, and this is not some, like, weird woo-woo thing, or it's just literally just sitting quietly for 15 to 30 minutes, and it's really awesome. I just, I highly suggest that you all just do that. Just sit quietly, uh, maybe in the morning, and then maybe in the afternoon for 15 to 30 minutes until you're, you're, you're done, until you're done you'll you'll know when you're done and then that's it It, and it'll be great okay um where the hell were we uh 1b the capacity to think or reflect this is cogitation that's the word that we're on and number two a single thought is a cogitation next is cogitative 
cogitative adjective from the 15th century, one of or relating to cogitation. Number two, capable of or given to cogitation. Next is cogito or cogito or cogito. So cog, you could say ka or ko, you could say gi or j, and then it ends in to. Cogito? I don't know. I keep I keep on saying the seeing the word in my head incognito, but this is not that whatsoever. I will say cogito. Noun from 1838. One, the philosophic principle that one's existence is demonstrated by the fact that one thinks. Oh, we're gonna get into the etymology in a second. Um, yeah, it's a it's a philosophical principle. Okay, philosophic principle. And number two. The intellectual processes of the self or ego. Oh, man, we could really delve into this, but we're not going to do that. Um, this is from the Latin, New Latin, cogito ergo sum. And that literally means, I think, therefore I am. And so cogito is the Latin for I think. So that's what this word is, cogito. Uh, or cogito, cogito, well, you know, all those different ways you want to say it. But I think cogito is the maybe more accurate way. Anyway, this is the principle that was stated by, I think he's, he's a French, a French philosopher, René Descartes. Um, but then if he, if he's French, why is he speaking Latin? Cogito ergo sum is Latin. Why didn't he come up with a French phrase? How do you say, I think, therefore I am in French? Somebody, you can tell me this. Um, but anyway, it's a, it's a fascinating philosophic principle, but I think we've learned enough since then that we know that maybe it's not entirely accurate. Um, I mean, we, we, we exist, and I think the fact that we can think about the fact that we exist, we can, we, we are conscious, I think that's, uh, fascinating, and, you know, other animals can't do that, but uh, it doesn't change the fact that you exist or not. I mean, a cat isn't thinking that, that it exists, probably, but it still does exist as much as we do. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a, people have their problems with this phrase, I think, but it was a good start. We had to start somewhere. Moving on to cognac, C-O-G-N-A-C, cognac. It is French, Noun from 1751, a brandy from the departments, the departments, the departments of Charente and Charente Maritime distilled from white wine. And I don't know if I said those words correctly, but it is a brandy. It is from uh, Cognac, France. That is the region in France. I don't even know if I've ever had Cognac ever. Maybe I should have some. Next is Cognate. This is the first form, and oh, so the, the last word in the last episode was cog, which is an abbreviation for cognate. I'm just, I'm just connecting this for you, that's all. Uh, so cognate, adjective from circa 1645, one of the same or similar nature, generically alike. Uh, number two, related by blood, also related on the mother's side. So if you're related in general or more specifically on your mother's side, then I guess you are cognates. 3A, related by descent from the same ancestral language. And 3B is talking about a word or a morpheme related by derivation, borrowing, or descent. 1, no, we're on 3C. Did I say 3, 2, 1? Oh my god. <laughs> this is getting insane. Um, the last one was supposed to be 3B. I'm afraid I said would be 1B, but I honestly have no idea. So, but next is 3C. It is talking about a substantive. And if you know, you know, the words and the grammars, then you know what this is. And I don't really know that, but I'm going to read this to you. It says related to a verb, usually by derivation and serving as its object to reinforce the meaning, whatever that is, uh, cognately. Cognately? Cognately. That's an adverb. So this is from Latin cognatus, which is from co plus gnatus. There's a G in there or, or no G. Natus. 
Uh, that is uh, from Nasi or Nasi, which means to be born. It, this is akin to the Latin gignere, which means to beget. Uh, you know that basically means to be to be to be born or to um, uh, come from or have a child or something like that. So it's all related to that. Uh, and then there's more at the word kin. So yes, it's all things that are related to each other. Second form of cognate noun from 1754, one that is cognate with another, related. They're related to each other. Next is cognation. Noun from the 14th century. It just means cognate relationship. Cognate relationship. Next is cognition. Noun from the 15th century. Cognitive mental processes. Also a product of these processes. Cognitional is an adjective. Um, is the etymology interesting? Kind of. It is from the Latin cognoscere which means to become acquainted with or know, K-N-O-W. Uh, that is from co plus gnoscere, which means to come to know. And there's more at the word know. Again, like I know things. Next is cognitive, adjective from 1586, one of relating to being or involving conscious intellectual activity as thinking, reasoning, or remembering, as in cognitive impairment. You don't want the cognitive impairment. I think I might have a little. Number two, based on or capable of being reduced to empirical, factual knowledge. And cognitively is an adverb. Next is cognitive dissonance. Two words, noun from 15, no, 1957. Psychological conflict resulting from incongruous beliefs and attitudes held simultaneously. So it's two ideas held in your head that, that, uh, that uh, what am I trying to say? That they're incongruous. They don't make any sense together. How can you have two thoughts that don't make any sense together? How can you believe two things that are paradoxes of each other? I don't have any examples for you. Sorry. Uh, and our last word is cognitive science, two words, noun from 1975, an interdisciplinary science that draws on many fields as psychology, artificial intelligence, linguistics, and philosophy in developing theories about human perception, thinking, and learning. I find this fascinating. I do find this fascinating. Cognitive scientist is a noun. Something that I will never be, but maybe in an alternate universe, I did become this. So the words today were cogency, cogeneration, cogent, cogitable, cogitate, cogitation, cogitative, co how do you say it? Cogitative, cogito, cognac, cognate, cognation, cognition, cognitive, cognitive dissonance, and cognitive science. Um, I think I want to pick, is this the one that I want to pick? Yes, this is the one. It is cogitate. Cogitate. This is the one that was about pondering and meditating and thinking. Um, yes. I like to cogitate when I'm taking a walk. Cogitate. Get that brain going and cogitate. Cogitate. All right. Enough of that. Let's talk about the holidays for today, September 17th. I think I updated my pages. Yes, I did. It is Australian Citizenship Day. In the U.S., it is Constitution Day. In Angola, it is Heroes Day. In Maharashtra, Maharash, Maharashtra, it is Marathwada Liberation Day. In the Netherlands, it is Operation Market, Market Garden Anniversary. Um, in Honduras, it is Teacher's Day. See if there's anything else. MIA Recognition Day. I think we just had that yesterday or something. Again, I don't know why these pages are all messed up. They got this thing on two different days. Um, beep, 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 Constitution Day and Citizenship Day. I guess that's uh, in the U.S. as well. 
International Grenache Day. That is a wine. National Apple, Apple, Apple Dumpling Day. It's it's Appling Day. Let's just combine the words. It's National Bakery Day. Maybe you're making some apple dumplings in the bakery. It is National Concussion Awareness Day. Uh, it shows a picture of people playing football because concussions are very common in football. And uh, that sucks. And it's good that they got helmets. But, uh, you know, people's mental and physical health are, is at the line here. Um, uh, Key and Peel have a really funny sketch about uh, concussion gotten during a football game. Ooh, it's National Monte Cristo Day. The Chicago Diner in Chicago has a really awesome Monte Cristo, and I have not had it in a really long time, and I want to go eat it. I want to go eat it. Is it, is today a, a weekend? Maybe I'll go get one. Um, National Professional House Cleaners Day. There's a lot of people who this is their job. They just go into people's houses and clean for them because they can't fl- clean for themselves or they don't want to, and they can afford it. And so this is good that people have jobs, but I don't, I don't think that they get enough respect, just like most people. Their job is to literally clean up after you. So, yeah, pay them, pay them fairly and respect them. Please. It is National Table Shuffleboard Day. It's the long, long table, and you put the sand on it, and it's kind of fun and hard. It is National Tradesman Day. There's lots of tradesmen, people. This shows a guy cutting boards, wood boards with a saw and, you know, plumbers and electricians and all that stuff. Uh, it is Time's Up Day. Is this the same Time's Up when we were seeing, like, hashtag Time's Up? Is that what it is? Um, it's not, I'm not entirely sure. But it is Time's Up Day. Um, come back, come back. Where'd you go? Uh, it is World Patient Safety Day. Oh, my Please, make sure your patients are safe every day. Um, that's it. That That's all the things. Anything else on this page? Yes. No. Yes? International Country Music Day. National Pet Bird Day. I know a couple people who have pet birds. I think that's kind of cool. I think if I had a pet bird, my cats would eat it. And I don't want that. Everybody, thank you for listening. We finished page 240. And uh, let's see where we go from here. I have some ideas. Probably page 241. We'll see what happens. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to a very special episode of The Dictionary. Um, I am here at Fump Fest. Uh, You probably heard me talk about that a few episodes ago um, because I recorded this morning and I was here last night, Friday. Um, I'm here again. Um, with an awesome group of people, and um, luckily, uh, Insane Ian agreed to uh, mention that I have this podcast and I have my recording stuff here, and I thought it would be fun to to grab a guest or two if I could while I'm here because, um, well, I think it really of of all the places to be, I think people here at Fump Fest, Funny Music Fest, would appreciate a ridiculous podcast like this. Um, so. I actually have a, a willing victim. <laughs> I've, I've got T. Campbell here. T, how you doing? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Spencer, a, um, a, <clears throat> I have to say I'm not sh- I, very accomplished in the comedy music sphere, but it's a, but but I do have I do have achievements in a few areas of words, and it, what you're doing seemed very interesting. Excellent, excellent. I appreciate that. Um, I also am not as well versed in the funny music world as, as a lot of the people here. Um, mm-hmm. I grew up with Weird Al, and you are wearing an awesome Weird Al shirt. Uh, <laughs> so we definitely have that in common. And then, of course, Dr. Demento was a big part of my childhood. I'm guessing that was probably for you too. Yeah, see, he was definitely he was he was definitely on the fringes. Like he like like all the cool kids to me were into him. So I felt like I w- was into him as well. Awesome. And so you, you've mentioned this, um, your connection here, why, why you're on this podcast now is words. What, what do you, what do you do? What's your connection with words? I've done writing and editing in various fields and it would take too long to talk about <laughs> all of them, but the, uh, but where I've done the most work is in comics and crosswords. I've scripted a number of different comics for the entirety of my adult life and more recently i've 
become somewhat distinguished as the guy who designs ridiculously large crosswords that uh, that would take a week or longer to solve. Okay, so uh, first of all, first question on that, how physically how large are we talking? Um we're talking about uh we're talking about 3 feet by 3 feet. And how many uh, clues? Like typically, I, I you know my parents get the uh, the, the Sunday um, the Chicago Tribune, and and the large Sunday crossword is probably like around a hundred across and a hundred down for the clues. How many do you have? Um, I don't. I know that the I know that the total number of answers is usually about. Forty-two hundred. Oh, um, so sometimes, sometimes a little bit less. Sometimes a little bit more. Depends on the uh, depends on how the design goes. Okay, so it might take somebody a week or so to solve it. I mean, it would take me a day, and then I'd be like, "All right, I'm done. I'm not smart enough for this." But um, <laughs> how long does it take you to actually make these? Um, it, it it most recently I've been doing a I've been doing a batch of them and trying to uh, and trying to bring economies of scale to bear. I'm hoping that I can get it down to the point where it takes a couple of weeks. Um, it's a, I have a number of computerized aids that oh, help nice. me through various parts of the process, but there are some judgment calls that just have to be made by a human, a human. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, what, what's the longest time it took to make one of these? Um, the longest time it took when I, uh, when, when I had no idea what I was doing was about three months. Yeah. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, where can people find these and find your work? Um, well, look for, look for Uber cross, look for the, the, the name Uber cross online. Okay. And, um, I have been quiet about them because there is a there's a big launch coming up oh. where I'm going to where I'm, I'm going to release a number of these that not only serve on their own but also join up together and Ooh. the um, and the joined version is my attempt to uh, to achieve some kind of immortality by getting into the Guinness Book of World Records. Currently, I, the uh, current currently the current record holder for uh, for largest crossword like ever is in the sixty thousand answer range, which you know dwarfs one of mine. But combined, <laughs> I think we'll I, I think we'll be able to beat that. I am looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. We always love to hear about those records, the best, the biggest, whatever <laughs> it is. Those are awesome. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, um, let's get into the words. This is sure. what we're here for. Sure. Um, so the first word in this episode is at the top of page 241, cognitive therapy. It is two words, noun from 1976, psychotherapy, especially for depression, that emphasizes the substitution of desirable patterns of thinking for maladaptive or faulty ones. Do you know anything about cognitive therapy? I know a little bit about it, and I and I have a fair amount of respect for it. I mean, it's a. I mean, my definition would be the the kind of therapy that works. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the hope with all mm -hmm. therapy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, if if somebody is suffering from pretty bad depression, this is a good thing to try. So. Yeah. yeah. Well. It, well, it, it's it's a. It's sort of meeting the mind on its own terms, mm. as opposed to uh, as, as opposed to coming to the mind a little arrogantly, like you've got the cheat code to figure it out. Um, and 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 I think that brings up feelings of respect in me. Definitely, we all like cheat cheat codes. Yeah. Uh, we heard a song earlier that had the uh, the Konami code in it: up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, select, start. We all do love those, but um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sometimes you go you go the real route. Uh, cool. We're going to move on to cognizable. That's a hard word to say. Cognizable. Mm -hmm. uh, it is an adjective from circa 1662. Uh, this one's got two definitions. One, capable of being judiciously heard and determined, as in a cognizable calm claim. Sorry. But yeah, I have to really focus on saying that word. Um, and then number two, capable of being known, as in cognizable events. Cognizably is an adverb, and uh, you know, 
as I've, as I've said, um, I'm at this festival. We're in a large hotel, so you might hear other things in the background. They're getting ready for a wedding just on the other side of that wall, 10 feet away from me. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, the audio quality is probably a little bit weird here. Um, cognizable. Maybe. Uh, Can you get that in one of your crosswords? It, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it'd be, it, yeah, it'd be no problem to fit it in. Is, is that cognizable or cognizable? Um, um, so, good question. Both are approved. Um, oh. Usually I do give all the forms, but I missed this one. Yeah, cognizable and cognizable, it, both are totally cool to use. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I just said totally cool. Um, <laughs> we're going to move on to cognizance. Mm -hmm. uh, cognizance, just the one pronunciation for that one. Uh, this is a noun from the 14th century. Can't imagine like old Middle English people saying cognizance. Um, number one, a distinguishing mark or emblem as a as a heraldic bearing 2a the synonyms are knowledge and awareness as in had no cognizance of the situation i feel like that's me most of the day have no cognizance of what's going on <laughs> uh 2b the synonyms are notice and acknowledgement as in take cognizance of their achievement and then number three more synonyms <laughs> jurisdiction and responsibility yeah there's some of these words that uh, there, it's just filled with synonyms because it's yeah. kind of hard to just come up with its own definition. But the first definition is really interesting there in light of the other two. It's a, it's it's much more concrete. Yeah. It's a, it, it's 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 like the the mark that you would know something by, I guess, is the connection. Yeah, yeah. Um, if we look at the etymology, it is from let's see, uh, Anglo-French. I cannot speak French. C O N O. I S T R E, and that means to know. Um, and yeah, we've there's so many other words that have that sort of beginning part of the word that mean no. Um, there were some other ones that I came across before I don't remember. Um, but yeah, it's the thing that you know. Like uh, you know, the first example I can think of is like Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. They have their their uh, banner, whatever it is, and right. that that thing, that image, whatever it is, is I guess you could consider that a cognizance, mm -hmm. an instance of something that you know. Mm -hmm. Um, moving on to cognizant. Clearly, we're in a section about all these words. Uh, this is an adjective from 1820. Knowledgeable of something, especially through personal experience. And then also the synonym mindful. I think it is really, really good to be mindful. I often have to remind myself, be mindful of not only what I'm saying, but what I'm physically doing. <laughs> like, how many times have I dropped a thing because I just didn't know what was going on? Yeah. You know, th th this is my first experience with your program, and it seems like a very meta section that you that we found here. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's knowing, I mean, th this is actually a very meta show in general. I just mm -hmm. talk about what I'm, what's literally going on. But yes, especially here, we're talking about knowing mm -hmm. whatever. Um, uh, oh, and then... You know, relatedly, this, another synonym is the word aware. We mm -hmm. are aware of mm -hmm. everything. Anything else on cognizant? No, I think I, uh, I think I, I think meta was probably my best <laughs> observation there. <laughs> yes, I, I love meta stuff. I really do. Mm -hmm. um, all right, next we have cognize. Uh, yeah, or you could emphasize either syllable: cognize or cognize. This is a transitive verb from circa 1837. Oh, now they've started the music. Maybe we should start dancing. No, we're not going to do that. Uh, the synonyms are know, like I know something, as we've been talking about, and also understand. I, I have cognized it. Uh, cognizer is a noun. The one who's doing the knowing, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean the I mean the the I Z E and what we associate with that is it it, it feels a little more active than know yep. or understand. It feels like you it feels like you you're putting in the effort to right. uh, to make this something that's part of your understanding. Definitely, you're, you're 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 hauling it out and bringing it into your brain. Right, right, and yeah, usually we're just sort of letting things seep in, and in that case, they might not yeah. seep in all the way. But yeah, mm -hmm. if you're actively doing it, this mm -hmm. is why I often forget most of the things that I read in this book because I'm just sort of focusing on reading and then I have not cognized anything. But every mm -hmm. once in a while, there are those gems that like just hit me. I'm like, and then those get stuck in the, in the memory banks. Mm -hmm. um, next is cognomen, or you can emphasize the first syllable and say cognomen. Oh, now that ta word takes me back. <laughs> oh, tell me. <laughs> well, a, um, well, I wasn't a very good speaker in 
high school. Um, You're a very good speaker now. You have a really wonderful voice. Actually. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. That's very nice to hear. But uh, but yeah, I I started a lot more, and therefore, when it came to languages, I was the best at the languages that didn't require a whole lot of speaking or or special pronunciation rules. So French was kind of a uh, kind of a bear for me it was kind of difficult to get through but latin yes. latin i could uh, could handle very well and i ended up handling about five years of it um it, cognomen is it is associated with latin the um the most romans of note had three names mm. um and one of them was their cognomen um gaius julius caesar mm. i'm 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 hoping that I'm getting this part right. <laughs> it's okay um, if you get it wrong. I get stuff wrong all the, the time. The um, Caesar was his uh, was his cognomen, I believe, and the uh, the um, and again, kind of the name he was known by. Sure. Um, the the name that his that his family held. Julius was a um, was an identifier, but um, but Gaius was more informal basically mm -hmm. basically they were in ascending order of importance okay okay um and I, and we um my my first year of latin we learned we we learned all this stuff with a um with a with a cast of characters and and the setting was uh was pompeii um mm -hmm. Slightly prior to uh, to volcano time, <laughs> right, um, right? So we so so we so we got to uh, so it was like see Dick, see Jane, see Spot, learn learn all about Dick, Jane, and Spot and their adventures with these simple words only in mm -hmm, Latin. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the year, we got to see Dick and Jane destroyed by a <laughs> volcano. Um, only Spot survived. Oh well, Lee, uh, thank God the animal survived. That that makes me happy. Um, yes, what all, what every kid or you know mm. anybody really wants to see is people destroyed mm. by a volcano um so so cognomen is the the last usually the last name the one that somebody is known for um i also yeah. uh, so was this high school that you took latin uh, it, that particular that particular class first year was eighth grade oh, so nice. almost high school and then all through high school, and then you took all Latin. through high school, yeah. yeah. Um, when I got into high school, I didn't know what language I wanted to take, and mm -hmm. beforehand they had, you know, some sort of thing where you go and see booths of different things, and Latin was interesting, and so I ended up taking the first two years of high school. I took Latin, and I think that's part of the reason why I got into this the words in general and the dictionary, and because I already had some sort of base of where words come from because so many of our mm. english words do come from latin yeah. um so it's all it's really cool to see a, a fellow latin like I, you know i've obviously <laughs> forgotten most of it but like i'm sure. so glad that i had that i got that mm -hmm. base knowledge um are you a they might be giants fan <laughs> is it safe um, to assume yes? I, I i enjoy i enjoy they might be giants i wouldn't consider myself an expert sure but I, sure, I, but, sure but there there are a handful of songs i play over and over yeah well so uh one of them john linnell just released a um a solo album called roman songs and oh. it's four songs it's just an ep but it's four songs all in latin hmm. and they're great and i think it was just released not too long ago so you should check that out. <laughs> I, I, I will. He, he certainly sounds like the... I'm not surprised from him. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> um, all right, well, we are going to... Oh, we haven't even read uh, Cognomen yet. We, we, we got off on, a, on an awesome tangent. Um, so here we go, right off the bat. Um, oh, I should say it's a noun from 1691, although obviously it was used way before that. Um, number one, the synonym is surname, which, you know, that's last name, um, but especially... The third of usually three names born by a male citizen of ancient Rome. We had that information even before we got to the definition. Um, and then it says compared to the synonyms nomen and prey nomen, or P-R-A-E. Which would nomen be the first one and prey nomen would be the second one? I believe prey nomen would be the first one. Okay. Like, like pre. In, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, that makes sense. In English, yeah. Yeah. That's why that's what I was thinking at first, but then they had them in the other order, so I got confused. Hmm. Um, and then number two is no. just the synonym name, just generically, and then especially a distinguishing nickname or epithet. Uh, cognominal is an adjective, and if we quickly look at the etymology, it is from Latin, as we've said, from co plus nomen, which means name, and there's more at the word name. Uh, all right, next is cognoscenti. 
this looks Italian. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know this one. <laughs> All right. Uh, I love it. C-O-G-N-O-S-C-E-N-T-E. It seems like anytime I have a guest on, there's always at least one word that they actually have a connection with. And it looks like we at least have two on this one. Mm-hmm. Um, you could you can definitely pronounce this a few other ways. I'm not going to go into that. Noun from 1776. A person who has expert knowledge in a subject. And the synonym is connoisseur. Mm-hmm. Um, quickly, the etymology. Yes, obsolete Italian. Uh, the spelling changed. Uh, let's see. It, it's an adjective. It means wise from the Latin cognoscent, cognoscens, uh, which is from uh, from the verb cognoscere. It doesn't say what that means, but I assume it means yeah. Similarly, you know, the, wise the, and the, expert, the, the knowledgeable in yeah, general. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's got kind of an elite connotation like you like you know i i I wanted to um uh, i i wish that i were in paris in the 1920s hobnobbing with a cognoscenti like Uh. gertrude stein and pablo picasso um the uh, the 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 people who the people who really know what they're about and make and make the rest of us feel like uh, i feel like <laughs> steward schmucks um. i feel like that all the time but yes i would love to go sit and just be a, a fly on the wall at, at that mm-hmm. time to be all around the uh, the cognoscente i love mm-hmm. words like this that's awesome mm-hmm. uh moving on to cognoscible cognoscible c-o-g-n-o-s-c-i-b-l-e i do like to spell some of these words since this is an audio only platform adjective from circa 1644 the synonyms are cognizable which uh, we read before, and knowable. So it's a uh, cognoscible is just something that can be known, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, next we have uh, it would be kogon. No, kogon. Kogon. C O G O N. Mm-hmm. Noun from 1898. Any of several tall grasses of southeastern Asia used especially for thatching, fodder, and erosion control. Um, so this is a, it's from a Spanish word, cogon, with an accent on the second O, uh, from Visayan and Tag, Tagalog, uh, from their word cugon with a K. Um, so, uh, the genus name of this grass is Imperata, and then especially the scientific name Imperata cylindrica. You know your grasses? This is all completely new to me. I, I, I have never heard this word before, but, uh, certainly... I mean, it seems legit, and, sure. and and it's in Webster's, so I have, so I don't have to worry for once about whether it actually is legit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You were worried, I know. Mm-hmm. Um, when you make your crosswords, do you? I assume you have to open up the dictionary now and then and find some stuff. There's there's definitely a lot of research that goes on. There's there's also um, with with crosswords, there's very um, you have to maintain a sense of what's known what's guessable and what's a black box um cagon is a word that i that that i would consider using because it's um because it is legitimate and it um and it does have some modern relevance um but the uh, but it is a word that i would only consider using if there were five known and guessable <laughs> words right. crossing it yeah at least four <laughs> but yeah five would be helpful then you then the, then at least the, if the person doesn't know what it is they can still find out find it out using the other methods and learn a new word that way but yeah that's yeah. a that the vast majority of people do not know what kogon is unless yeah. you're a grass expert yeah and some of the and some of the words that we've gone over like uh, like like cognize mm-hmm. even if you've never seen the word cognize before if you've got a general understanding of the english language mm-hmm. you you can draw on your experience of words like recognize and figure out what the heck it means without yeah. needing all seven crossings to right. uh, to fill you in but kagon that's a uh, that, that that's that's a new frontier for a lot of people yeah um, we, I, I would like to suggest let's get that in the, the next one that you make. I'm just going to say that for every word um, because I'm talking to a crossword maker. Mm-hmm. So uh, next is Cog Railway. Two words, noun from 1896. A steep mountain railroad that has a rail with a rail with cogs engaged by a cog wheel on the locomotive to ensure traction. 
I, I'm so impressed by smart people who have figured out how to make things like this. That's the last yeah. thing I could do. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's, 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 yeah, that's an interesting one because I can sort of visualize it as you're describing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That always helps to understand the thing. If mm -hmm. I can help to, if I can visualize it, mm -hmm. uh, next we've got cog wheel, one word noun from the 14th century, a wheel with cogs. Oh, look mm -hmm. at that. How mm -hmm. clever. Um, and uh, the synonym is the 6A2 definition for the word gear. So, mm -hmm. you know, not just any gear, that very specific gear. Um, a wheel with cogs. I mean, yeah, this is just because the cogs, as we learned, I think, in yesterday's episode, they're just the little teeth at the end of the gear. Yeah. Um, so is a cog wheel different from a gear with cogs? Like what makes it a wheel? What makes it a gear? I'm just asking this out to the ether because I have no clue. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, yeah, and I, um, and I'm a little bit unsure of my answer. Um, <laughs> cogs, I've, all, I've, I've always heard as the um, as the smallest unit of clockwork. Like it's just mm -hmm. a it, it's just a single wheel with teeth. Gear and gears, I've sometimes heard as larger constructions made of those cogs. Mm. Um, I, I think I've also heard some people use gears synonymously with cogs in this case, but right, um, right. But I think gears has a little bit more of a variety to its um, scale. Sure. Uh, and mm -hmm. then just for a reminder, um, and, and for you too, T, uh, the definition for the cog was just a tooth on the rim of a wheel or gear. But yeah, I th you know, I think the cog gets used as as the gear itself, maybe. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a very, I think, much more versatile than people probably think. Yeah, the, yeah the, the, the association that I always have when I hear that word is, is um, oh, you don't want to be just another, another cog in the machine. Exactly. Um, I, uh, we, I don't want to be that, but mm -hmm. I am that in some yeah. sense. So, you know, I mean, it's, I, I mean, you know, in some sense we all are, yes. we're, uh, we're, 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 we're all part of the human race and we're, 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 we're no one of us going to be bigger than the whole. Exactly. We are all part of this giant cog wheel. Mm -hmm. Um, next is cohabit. This is a verb from circa 1530. Uh, I believe it is just an intransitive verb. Uh, number one. To live together as or as if a married couple. You are cohabitating. Uh, number 2A, to live together or uh, or in company, as in buffaloes cohabiting with crossbred cows. Uh, that is a quote from, it looks like, Biology Abstracts. That's probably some journal. Mm -hmm. uh, buffaloes cohabitating with crossbred cows. What, what are the cows and the buffaloes got going on? Uh, 2B, to exist together, as in two strains in his philosophy co uh, cohabit in each... Wow, this quote got longer than I was ready for. Two strains in his philosophy cohabit in each of his major works. That is a quote from Justice Bulcher. Mm. Cohabitant is a noun and cohabitation is a noun. And does the etymology look interesting from the Latin habitare, which means to inhabit... From habere, which means to have. You have a, ha I don't know. And there's more at the word give. Yeah. The, um, it, it may be a um, word with an older etymology, but it certainly achieved greater relevance in modern generations. The uh, my, my wife and I... Um, cohabited for about a year before mm -hmm. we uh, before we officially got married and that is increasingly the done thing these days so it, in fact I, in fact i feel a little old just saying that because the because uh, <laughs> the the generation that's coming up now really uh, really understands it as the default but i'm just um but i'm just barely old enough to uh, to remember when it was uh, when, when it was frowned upon to mm -hmm. uh, to to be living together as a prelude to marriage yeah. some people of course uh, did live together as an alternative to marriage mm -hmm. or and, and 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 you know sometimes that's because they don't really want that sort of lifetime commitment other times there's a uh, there's a friend of mine who's been um, who's been cohabiting with her with her boyfriend for about 20 years and i'm mm. and, and i'm like 
come on, you're married. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> well, and that's the thing is that, if, you know, it, I think in many ways it's mm. actually more important mm. to figure out if you can cohabitate together yes. uh, than, than actual marriage. You know, if yes. you can't live together, uh, there are some problems and a lot of people can't. So I think it's a yes, really, and, really important thing. Yeah, and, and, and one of the things that, um, and one of the reasons that we that we did it that way was because I had had the experience of, um, of living with some of my friends before, Mm -hmm. uh, before I was even in a position to consider marriage. And, um, some of my friends made, uh, made pretty good roommates and some of them didn't. (laughs) Yeah. I always come back to the example of like, uh, a pot of pasta sitting on the stove for two or three days. And Mm -hmm. I literally experienced that not with my roommate, but my girlfriend's roommate many years ago, her, Mm -hmm. her friend made some pasta Mm -hmm. and it's just sat on the stove and it's like, this is, you can't, you can't live like this. You got to learn how to be an adult. (laughs) And yeah, that's, that's pretty rough. Um, all right, we are going to move on to cohere, C O H E R E cohere verb from 1598. Uh, we are starting with intransitive. It's all yes. One a to hold together firmly as parts of the same mass. And then broadly the synonyms stick and adhere one B to display cohesion of plant parts Two to hold together as a mass of parts that cohere three a to become united in principles, relationships, or interests. Uh, 3B, to be logically or aesthetically consistent. And then the one transitive verb definition says, to cause, to cause to cohere. And the example of the things that you would be cohering are parts or components. And then it says the synonym is stick. Yeah, basically that's what it is. Things are sticking together. The mm-hmm. etymology is from the Latin co plus hirere, which means to stick. So it's all sticking. It's an interesting case of a of a very active sentiment being given to something that we would or, ordinarily give a passive meaning. Right. Like like, like it, it pretty much just means hold together and exist. But uh, but but cohere sounds so much more dynamic. Um, a, a, I I remember the um, I remember a bit from from T. H. White's The Sword in the Stone, where mm-hmm. uh, where Arthur is learning learning different things from all that nature has to offer and at one point he uh, he speaks to the stones and the um and the stones guiding principle is is cohere mm. but from from their perspective because uh, because stones exist on a much larger time scale than we do um cohering and holding together really is an active thing that you uh, that that you have to make an effort to do um right. but uh, but but it takes some um it takes some imagination to uh, to apply that to one's own human life mm-hmm. um like like you know i try to, uh, to i i try to make my uh i try to make my life have some coherence um well, thank you for that segue, because uh, that's our next word. But real quickly, mm-hmm. I just wanted to say that, yeah, it, it just to add on to what you said, stick stick mm-hmm. is like, oh, things just stuck together, right? Mm-hmm. There, it was, like yeah. you said, very passive. But yeah, mm-hmm. when you put cohere into it, that means it's taking, it's taking that effort. I think I'm literally saying your words back to you, but it just <laughs> struck me again that like, yes, you have to put effort into making something cohere. And mm-hmm. I really like that thing from the sword, the sword and the stone. The sword. Yeah, the, I like the that. Sword and the stone. I like yeah. that quote mm-hmm. a lot. Um, So coherence, uh, it is a noun from circa 1580, one, the quality or state of cohering. I love it when they put basically the word in the definition uh, as 1A, systematic or logical connection or consistency. 1B, integration of diverse elements, relationships or values. And number two, the property of being coherent, as in a plan that lacks coherence. We're not going to get to word about the word coherent until the beginning of the next episode. Um, but uh, I will do the last word because it's related to coherence. It is coherency. C-O-H-E-R-E-N-C-Y. Uh, noun from 1603. And the synonym is just the word coherent. So it is literally the same thing. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the, yeah, that, that love to have the, uh, love, love to have basically the same word in the definition. Yeah. That's a, that's, that's one of the, um, it's one of the rules that you're of 
crossword writing. You're not allowed <laughs> to. Uh, you're, you're you're not allowed to put the word in the clue that's going to be in the answer. Actually, you can't. You generally speaking, you can't put any of the words that are going to be in the answers in any of the clues. Oh, even if it's for, for a different a, for one. A, for, a, for, a, uh, for a normally scaled puzzle. Mm. With, um, with, with puzzles at my scale, it kind of, uh, that, that rule kind of has a lot of wiggle room. Yeah, 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 it, totally. as, uh, Basically, as long as we're not giving it away, then, uh, then it's not a concern. Right. But, um, but yeah, you don't want to... Um, you don't want to plant the the seed. You you don't want to plant the answer too obviously yeah. in the solver's mind. Yeah, the, the dictionary mm. gets a little wiggle room on that because mm. sometimes you literally have to put the word in there or some yeah. form of it. But mm. yeah, for uh, for a crossword, I, yeah, that does seem like that's one of the cardinal rules. Don't mm -hmm. do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. So I will quickly just reread the words, and then you okay. get to pick a word of the episode, whatever one is. Oh. Okay. Whatever, whatever, whatever speaks to you in any way. So we had cognitive therapy, cognizable, cog cognizable or cognizable, cognizance, cognizant, cognize, cognomen, cognoscente, cog cognoscible, uh, cogon or no cogon, cograil, cogwheel, cohabit, cohere, coherence, and coherency. Well, that's a. Uh, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> and I can give you a second. Cohere and Kogun are probably my favorites. Um, I'm going to give it to uh, I'm going to give it to Kogun because I like learning new things. Yeah, the grass. Mm -hmm. That was probably the one that you knew the least about. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Uh, Kogun mm -hmm. is the word of the episode. Um, and you know, just because it was the most different of all these, maybe I will find a picture of some Kogan grass and post it on social media. Also, with uh, with, with with five letters, fairly common letters, and a and, and a and uh, an even constant vowel pattern. Right, it's it makes back and a, forth. It, yep. it's it's very crossword convenient. I, I would say it's very crosswordy. <laughs> um, awesome. So uh, typically right. I, I put a little bit more at the end, which I will okay. probably record later. Um, but thank you so much to T for, for being a part of this, being on this ridiculous podcast. No problem. And, no um, problem. Uh, uh, lastly, where, where can people find you? Um, people can find my work at gildedage.net. Um, there is a, uh, there, there is something that I'm developing for Webtoon, but it's not ready yet. Um, the, the crosswords at this point, um, best place to, uh, to look for them is to, uh, is to search for Uber cross as the, uh, as the end of the year approaches that word will start appearing in more places. Oh, that is so good to hear. Mm -hmm. um, Uber cross, when I hear that, I also sort of think of just this like crazy cross in a church that has like spikes coming out of it or like <laughs> metal music playing behind it. I don't know. That's an Uber cross. Um, uh, and then very last thing, uh, do you just have any words of wisdom? What what speaks to you? What do, what, what do you want to let the people know? Well... I, I I think this is a really interesting approach for a podcast, and Thank I've, you. and and um, and I think that uh, and I think it's certainly a great approach to language. I've done I've I've done a lot of sifting through giant lists of words as part of the research for mm -hmm. the uh, for the giant crosswords. Um, Doing it in this sort of alphabetical fashion is a nice way to guarantee that you'll get a variety of stimuli. It won't be just a, just ancient words from the uh, from the Bible or Shakespeare. You might run into uh, as as we did in this podcast. You ran into in, in this particular episode. Yeah. You ran into a uh, into one word that hailed from ancient Rome, and then a, and then another word that was more relevant to uh, to how relationships are conducted today absolutely uh and that's i have mentioned that many times actually that i love you know going from one topic to another to a vastly other topic um it's it's been a lot of fun in it and it works the brain so i hope uh people are also enjoying this go check out his work and um 
Thanks again to T for being on this episode. It was great. I had a really good time and it was a really fun conversation. So we have to finish up this episode by reading some holidays for September 18th. Uh, let's see. In Azerbaijan, it is Day of National Music. So go learn about some Azerbaijani music. Um, in the Okinawa Prefecture in Japan, it is Island Language Day. In Chile, it is National Day, or they also say Dio Dio Siocho, Dio Siocho, something like that. Um, in the U.S., it is National HIV, AIDS, and Aging Awareness Day. So I guess it's aging specifically with people who uh, have HIV or AIDS. And yeah, that's a thing um, that didn't used to happen. They didn't used to be able to age. So now with technology and science and medicine, uh, they can actually live longer lives. Um, in Croatia, it is Navy Day. It is World Water Monitoring Day. Monitor your water and make sure you drink lots of water you got to stay hydrated um let's see any other ones that we haven't said yet in colombia it is love and friendship day in the european union it is european heritage days also in chile it is an first national board of government of chile or chile uh okay i think we are in the fun holidays section now uh, so, it is Batman Day. I don't know why. I would assume it's the first day that he appeared in a comic book or something, but hey, na 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 Batman. It's Big Whopper Liar Day. <laughs> gotta tell a big whopping lie. It is Boys and Girls Club Day for Kids. It is Chiropractic Founders Day. It is First Love Day. Hug a Greeting Card Writer Day. Oh, what was that Adam Sandler movie? Didn't he write greeting cards or something? Uh, go hug Adam Sandler if you know him. International Coastal Cleanup Day. International Eat an Apple Day. There's a good chance I will be eating an apple today anyway. International Equal Pay Day. Make sure everybody gets paid equally. International Read an Ebook Day. Well, you got to get an ebook reader before you can read the ebook. International Red Panda Day. Locate an Old Friend Day. National Cheeseburger Day. National Clean Up Day. It's the same picture and it's the same idea as the one for coastal cleanup. So clean up in general and coastal cleanup. National Dance Day. Dance, dance, dance. National Gymnastics Day. Uh, National Respect Day. Oh, maybe this would be a good day, good, good day to watch the... Uh, Oh, my God, I'm blanking. Aretha Franklin movie that just came out. Uh, sounds actually really good. Puppy Mill Awareness Day. Be aware of these things that are happening that we should not have happen. Responsible Dog Ownership Day. Rice Krispies Treats Day. Software Freedom Day. Why are there so many holidays today? Thank a Police Officer Day. Thank you. World Bamboo Day. Uh, but, but, but that's it on that page. Um, Oktoberfest starts this week. Today, it's for a week. But what, you can't start Oktoberfest in September. That that doesn't make any sense. Uh, just wait like a couple weeks. Um, any other fun holidays that we missed? We got a lot already. Jeez. Independence Day. I think that's Chile. Yep. Um, National Day of Civic Hacking. Hmm. And that's it. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. This is the podcast where I read the dictionary and all this stuff in it, and sometimes, like today, I have guests, uh, and it's very fun because uh, it's just it, it adds a whole new dimension to the whole thing. So, I am still here at FumpFest. You guys heard from T yesterday, and now we've got Beth and Josh. Beth performed, well, both of them performed on Friday night and did an amazing job. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about what you do? Well, it appears that uh, for this, I don't remember much, but my evil twin, who calls herself Bad Beth and Beyond, uh, took my instrument and uh, stole my husband away. It was and terrible. It, it was horrible. You know, she put, a, she put a leash and a collar on him and she dragged him upstage. So she was playing my instrument, which is an, a bazooki. It's an... Irish adaptation of a Greek instrument, and she did all these 
not very family friendly parodies and not very family friendly originals. And the next morning, uh, my my husband returned to me traumatized. And you know, I was heavily sedated. I honestly don't remember much. Yeah, it's probably better that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that name that she came up with, Bad Beth and Beyond, is just moi, chef's kiss. Perfect. I love it. Yeah, she just had to switch uh, two vowels. I <laughs> right, guess that exactly. would be a vowel movement. Yeah. Uh, and if if you wanted people to know this, where would they find Bad Beth and Beyond's work? Uh, she's got a Facebook page that needs a serious makeover. But in the meantime... Um, uh, mine is uh, a Facebook page that uh, handle is Bethodist or uh, BethPattersonMusic.com. And you can just find my stuff with hers. It's fine. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Easy. All together. Uh, cool. So should we just talk about these random set of words that we don't know what's coming? I think that's a fine idea. Awesome. Uh, okay, cool. So I, I, tend, I read the list of words right beforehand, but I don't read the definitions. It's all just off the cuff, so you, we're in the same boat here. None of us know what's, what's coming. All right. All right, so by the way, this is airing on September 19th this month, uh, next month. Is that, is that connection, is there a connection to that date with either of you? September 19th. Not really. It would have been a long shot if it... Uh, se- <laughs> September 19th. I think uh, you, you asked me out on a date somewhere around then, uh, years ago, and I said, okay. But okay. I was on uh, I was on tour, and uh, so I had to get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk later, after the tour. Uh, all right. So our first word is coherent. C O H E R E N T. This is an adjective from circa ni- uh, no 1555. I don't know why I said 19 there. Um, we have a few definitions. One A logically or aesthetically ordered or integrated, and the synonym is consistent. Coherent, consistent, as in, we have a couple examples. Coherent style also is in a coherent argument. Uh, you know, you guys, did I hear you're married? Yes. Are there arguments that happen sometimes in a, in a relationship? And are they sometimes coherent? <laughs> <laughs> arguments? What are you talking about? We Never. don't fight. No. Yeah, yeah, we do. Do we? Yeah, totally. Uh, wait. You d- as... <laughs> You see, this is this is an in, the most incoherent fight we've had, you know, in the past like ten minutes. Yeah, in the past ten minutes, right? All the other ones are very coherent. That one was incoherent, but I liked it. One uh, B. I'm losing my place. Uh, having clarity or intelligibility. Do I have any intelligibility? I, I don't know if I said that word correctly. Uh, and the synonym is understandable, as in a coherent person. Also, as in a coherent passage. What? No, yeah. What? <laughs> what? Did I, were you, was I understandable? What? I try to be coherent, but maybe I'm not. Oh, I maybe have to rethink this whole thing. Uh, number two, having the quality of cohering, especially the synonyms cohesive and coordinated, as in a coherent plan for action. You see, this, this would be the perfect opportunity to make a blonde joke and say, yeah, like, it's, it's not really good for a relationship to be coherent. Like, he listens to the same records that I do, and I hear that's not good in, in a relationship. If you, like, always have to listen to the same things, you're coherent. <laughs> like, Ooh. oh, my God. <laughs> that was a good one. That was, I was, I didn't get it right away, but I got there. That was, that was nice. Well played, well played. Uh, okay, 3A for coherent. Uh, relating to or composed of waves having a constant difference in phase, as in coherent light. Also, uh, we're here, it's all music, it's sound. Sound is also all waves. So, you know, I think, I think this weekend is a coherence of waves, sound waves coming together. A coherence of coherence, if you will. Oh, it, no, I see what you did there. Yeah, it, it all comes back together. Yeah, it's pretty, this is getting pretty meta. It's metacoherent. <laughs> we Oof. talked about that in the last one. I never met a coherent I didn't like. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, and then our last one for coherent is 3B, producing coherent light, as in a coherent source. Coherently is an adverb. And is there anything? No, we're going to skip the etymology. So that was coherent. Uh, now, probably relatedly, we have coherer. 
C-O-H-E-R-E-R. It's kind of a weird word. Noun from 1894. It's one definition. A radio detector in which an imperfectly conducting contact between pieces of conductive material loosely resting against each other is materially improved in conductance by the passage of high-frequency current. Oh, that old definition again. (sighs) It's one of those words that you can't say after, like, two shots of tequila. Coherer. You don't know how to stop. Coherer. Right. It's like the rural juror from, uh, (laughs) what was that show? 30, 30 Rock. 30 Rock. Yeah. Um, did you ever see the movie The Man with Two Brains? Steve Martin? Ooh, that, that's, a, that's a way back machine a way, there. Yeah. yeah. Well, your, your coherer reminded me of one of the names. He said, I'm Dr. Havarararar. I think he was just coming up with names off the top of my head, off the top of his head. Anyway, that was coherer. I did not understand any of it, but it, it is a radio detector that exists. It, it sounds like a Michael Jackson. I'm talking with the man in coherer. I'm asking him to. <laughs> I think that should be uh, next year's dumb parody idea. Yeah. No, I was I was proud of mine today. Oh, yeah. you know, that I, was the minimalistic approach. I uh, I so for those who don't know, because you weren't here, none of you know uh, the dumb parody idea. People get up for 60, 90 seconds, do a dumb parody, and uh, bad. Would it be bad Beth and Beyond? Bad well, Beth? this time I decided I would be even worse. Oh, that's right. That's Beth right. Beth and Beyond, because then there's a little hat tip to uh, Weird Al. Exactly, exactly. So even worse Beth and Beyond. Because I was going for dumb. They were not talking about like my most brilliant parodies. Oh, right. I've, I've written some that, some parodies that I'm, I'm rather proud of, but it's like, okay. You can't play those. I, you know, it's like, how much dumber can it possibly be than to get up and I held my phone up, pretending like I was straining to look at the lyrics, you know, adjusting it, you know, bring my phone close to my face and far away, you know, because at my age, that's what I have to do anyway. And uh, singing the instrumental version of Tequila, and at the crucial moment, da na 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 da beer. And I was waiting. I was like, okay, where is this going to go? What are the, there's so many options of, you know, there's was, one word in the whole song. I was going for, I was going for dumb. <laughs> you you nailed it. You nailed it. I, and, in fact, the the premise is a little a little unclear for the dumb parody contest. Is it for the dumbest parody or right. the best dumb parody? Right. Uh, I was wondering that when they were uh, announcing the winners. Is it wait, is it the dumbest? Is it the yeah? I don't know. But uh, I, I thought I thought it was pretty dumb. It was dumb. Uh, I think if it were anything clever, I, I think it. It, you may have won, which is maybe not the goal. Maybe you don't want to win that award because you want to uh, be dumb. Yeah, well, it's, you know, I, I definitely was going for the least amount of effort. <laughs> I, oh, oh, I always appreciate that. <laughs> as little effort as possible. That's why I'm literally reading a book. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, back to the book. We have the word cohesion, noun from 1660. One, the act or state of sticking together tightly, especially the synonym unity, as in the lack of cohesion in the party and that is from the times literary supplement and people may hear some singing in the background because we're down the hall from where the show is happening that we're missing so we'll get through this quickly so we can go watch the show uh number two union between similar plant parts or organs and number three molecular attraction by which the particles of a body are united throughout the mass Cohesionless is an adjective. That is when there's no cohesion. These are more oddly specific definitions than I was a- anticipating. What, you've never read the dictionary before? <laughs> you, you know, I, now I can honestly say, Spencer, you know, that's like, I could listen to that man read the dictionary. You know how people, you know, always say that. You know, now I can, I can honestly say that about you. Well, you can go back to episode one and you can literally read, listen to me read the dictionary. Yeah. I In think fact- you're, it's normally phone book. I don't know if I would be so good at the phone book. But this one, I got it. Well, I'm, I'm familiar with the dictionary because I used to get into so much trouble at school. I would spend a lot of times after school having to copy the dictionary. Oh, was that one of the things they made you do? Oh, yeah, they made, you know, but it was for things. We had an electronic bell sound. Now, I'm not in full voice because I've got a little bit of crud, so I'm singing everything uh, down below. But I used to just memorize the pitch, and I would imitate the sound of the electronic sure. bell and half the class would just get up and leave <laughs> 10 minutes early and uh you know i those stupid people would get punished and you know but i'd have to spend like days after school copying the dictionary oh my god that's okay we'll have to talk about that later because that sounds fascinating um and I'll, I'll well done on imitating the bell sound to, to actually convince people that the bell was ringing is good 
I, I was I was proud of myself. I would be too. I would be too. Uh, okay, so that was cohesion. Now we have cohesive. This is how the book goes. They you get a lot of the same stuff in a There's row. There's a lot of overlap. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so this one is an adjective from circa 1731, exhibiting or producing cohesion or coherence, as in a cohesive social unit. Also as in cohesive soils. And I think that would be related to the, the last one we had. Uh, cohesively is an adverb and cohesiveness is a noun. Would you Actually, call yourself... I'm- I'm yeah, pretty good. sure that one goes back to at least 1726. I'm going to have to uh, contradict them there. Yeah, I think you're probably right. You know, circa 1731, they left it open for, for some gray area. But but yeah, I'm, you probably have proof, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. You have to ask the madman who wrote from the insane asylum. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, okay, next we have, we're done with cohesion of different kinds. Now we are on coho. C O H O, <laughs> noun from 1869. Oh, why does this have to be family friendly? Because uh, <laughs> this 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 is like a setup for like the best joke ever. So what we can do is you can still give your joke, and I will probably cut it out and put it uh, as a Patreon exclusive. If anybody wants to go well, listen I, to that, I, I think I've just said enough. There we go. I'm just gonna leave the human brain to fill in the gaps right there. Fair enough. Um, a couple of pages ago, I got to the word cock and all the cock-related words, and so I had to keep my mouth shut <laughs> on all that. Those fun jokes. You see, I was thinking Coho was yet another recently invented neighborhood in New York. <laughs> and, and London, too. I think everybody's got a little a mm-hmm. Coho. Yeah. All right. What, what is a Coho? Uh, it is a rather small Pacific salmon that has light colored flesh and is native to both coasts of the North Pacific and is stocked in the Great Lakes. They stock it in the Great Lakes, uh, called also coho salmon and silver salmon. Um, And the etymology says, what does it say? It is from uh, Halkomelen. Halkomelen, is that a a, a language? Uh, That is Salesian language of the Southwest British Columbia. So that's the language, and it comes from their word, which I will have to spell. Uh, seriously, I have never seen something like this. It is K with a thing over it, with a W that's superscript, with an upside down E, with an accent on it, and an X, and then another superscript W, and then another upside down E, and then an O with a slash through it. Are you talking about a schwa, or is this a completely the upside down E? That may be, maybe it's a schwa. That's the. Uh. It's the thing that, that yeah. It's the thing that they use in the pronunciation guide. But all the yeah. other ones, I mean, obviously, I don't speak Halkamalem, but I'm assuming it's pronounced Coho. It's, well, the the upside down the schwa is an uh. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we were taught in in school. You know, think of the the e's just had a very bad day. He's upside down. He's going uh. uh. That's not English. It's sh- uh, Swahili. Ooh. Swahili. Um. Coho. Have you ever caught a coho? I, I I think it's it's something that Santa Claus, you know, when he's uh, he's uh, going for the minimalist thing, you know, he's Santa's a little helper. Santa says ho ho ho, and his his cohort just says co ho ho. Co ho ho. You said the salmon come from both coasts of wherever they're from. So if they're bicoastal, would that then make it a bico coho? And and if it was, you know, just. Um, Right uh, around the, not the imperial uh, not the style, what am I looking for? You know, you could have a bicoastal, you know, go out to Vienna and look at the architecture, you know, and you could have a rococo, rococo, bicoco, <laughs> ho. Uh, yes, what she said. <laughs> Ro- yeah, rococo, bicoco, ho. Yeah, Something. and have some hot chocolate, so you could have a coco, rococo, bicoco, ho, ho. <laughs> Cohere, ver, 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 ver. Yes. Uh, we could go on for a long time on that one, <laughs> and I really enjoyed that. I was not prepared for that whatsoever. That was all them. Um, okay, what you got for this one? Cohomol- <laughs> Cohomology. Cohomology. I think our discussion was just the study of... I think that's... I think that's. Can I hazard a guess and say that's the study of words like coho? Yes, I think that is correct. We don't even need to read the definition. Yeah, the definition is the previous two minutes of this podcast. <laughs> exactly. Cohomology. But there's so many O's, I want to say cohomology. 
Uh, so this one is a noun from circa 1959, a part of the theory of topology in which groups are used to study the properties of topological spaces and which is related in a complementary way to homology theory. You see, my dad is a, is actually a, a topologist. Okay. He's you know math you know he's a math professor, but topology is is his thing. And uh, I hope he doesn't tune into this podcast because he would totally disown me for not knowing this in advance. <laughs> well, um, he emailed me earlier and said, I'm definitely going to be listening to September 19th. No, he won't know in, unless you tell him. Um, but yeah, so sorry, he didn't teach you about cohomology? You know, about the things that my dad had to sit down and explain to me. I caused so much trouble that he didn't have, you know, like imitating the sound of the bell right. that he didn't uh, have, have a chance to. Cohomology was always at the top of the list, but then you went and did something that he had to talk to you about, and it just kept on getting yeah. pushed. Um, cohomology is also just called cohomology theory, and cohomological is an adjective. And that's all I got for that one. Personally, I don't believe in cohomology. After all, it's only a theory. <laughs> Yeah, we sh definitely should not believe that. It, uh, maybe I should have had a topologist on this. Topologist? Topo yeah, I guess that would have been the word. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> Topologists, we... they twist the facts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I get to the T's, maybe I'll have your, your dad on. Yeah. If he's still around? Uh, I mean, he is. He, he might just tell dirty jo It might not be uh, very family friendly, you know. Well, we'll, we'll do that as an exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, next is cohort. This is a fun word. Noun from the 15th century, 1A, one of ten divisions of an ancient Roman legion. 1B, a group of warriors or soldiers. 1C, the synonyms are band and group. 1D, so many ones. 1D, a group of individuals having a statistical factor as age or class membership in common in a demographic study, as in a cohort of pre-medical students. And number two, the synonyms are companion and colleague, as in, it is a quote, a few of their cohorts decided to form a company, and that is a quote from Bert Hawksberg, Hock uh, and it's from basically the word court, so maybe they held court together, I don't know, you guys look like cohorts. My question is, who decided which one of those two definitions went first? Because the second one is the only one I'd ever heard before. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. um, I have had that question, too. I, I don't know. I think it goes back and forth. Sometimes if there's obsolete ones, they'll put those at the beginning. But sometimes if it's the, it, to me, it seems like it's the more common usage one, they would put that first. But I agree, I would have put number two first in that case. Um, so I, Like, is somebody at the publisher going, I know, let's mess with people. Yeah, yeah. They don't have time to get all the way to the bottom. So if they're looking up for the definition of cohort, they get, you know, band, group, Romans, etc. And that's not going to help them in the long run. They need to know that companions and colleagues are also co cohorts. All right. Next is cohosh. C-O-H-O-S-H. -O -O noun from 1789. Any of several North American medicinal or poisonous plants as a, the black cohosh, I guess it's cohosh, I want to say cohosh, but it's cohosh, B, the blue cohosh, and C, baneberry. Those are all types of cohosh, I guess. I've never heard of this. You know, it's, so these are, these are, you say they're, they're toxic? Um, medicinal or poisonous plants. You see, that, that's, uh, that leaves you wide open. It's, is it medicinal or is it poisonous? Well. There's only one way to find out. Yeah. I think it, it makes you think of Terry Pratchett, who said something to the, I'm going to butcher this, he said something to the effect of, all mushrooms are edible, some mushrooms are edible more than once. Yeah, I, have, I think I've heard that one as well. Um, you know, some, there are certain things that are poisonous that I think we still use as medicine, so oddly, I think it can be both, this but you've yeah. you got to be careful about how much you ingest. This is true. Medicinal to a point. Yes. <laughs> and then it is deadly. I was just thinking it sounded like the name of a character in a Joss Whedon TV show. Kohosh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the etymology says it is from Eastern Abenaki, and then it uh, spells out their word for it, which, again, is not, uh, not American in any way, so I don't know how to read it. 
Um, next is co-housing, noun from 1988. Semi-communal housing consisting of a cluster of private homes and a shared community space, as for cooking or laundry facilities. Really? Nobody thought of that word before 1988? Right? Yeah. Before that, they were just saying coho. <laughs> That's as far as they could get. That, that's because because uh, if you lived together, you know, before you know, before saying I do, it was looked down upon. You know, you're mm-hmm. disreputable. So, you know, before that, you know, before we got married, we were co-hos. Yeah. <laughs> very very co very co. Yes. Uh yeah co housing. It's a you know I think there are different different ways that that could be. You know I live in an apartment building. It's a condo building, but I, I guess technically we we would be co housing in a place, but we're not like, you know, we have the same laundry, but that's about it. I don't know any of my neighbors. Uh, All right, are you ready for the last word? Bring it. There's two forms. The first form, well, it's the word, uh, I I guess it would just be coif, Um, although it does look, so the first form, it says coif. It does say the pronunciation is coif, but also coif for part of it. We'll, we'll We'll just read it. Uh, this is a noun from the 14th century, so if you want to say coif, that's fine. One, a close-fitting cap, as 1A, a hood-like cap worn under a veil by nuns. Uh, 1B, a protective, usually metal skull cap, formerly worn under a hood of mail. Uh, 1C, a light cap, formerly, a lot of formally, I hate that word, a white cap formerly worn by English lawyers and especially by sergeants at law also the order or rank of a sergeant at law and then number two is i guess it's coiffure is that how you say that word coiffure Mm -hmm. that is so that technically i guess would be coif but now we have the second form which is coif or coif Uh, this is a verb transitive verb from the 15th century one to cover or dress with or as if with a coif or coif it's so that people can, you know, if, if somebody says, what's a coiffer? You can say, oh, to protect your skull. I probably won't remember that, but yes, I will try. <laughs> it's like, what's the butt, or what's the, what's the butt for? Yeah. <laughs> South Park joke. I'm sure they, that joke has been in other places too. What's a Yeah. Uh, and then number two, to arrange hair by brushing, combing, or curling. Trying to That's, visualize a coif. Well, I, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's very uh, seems a little bit archaic. I'm just kind of relieved that coif is an acceptable pronunciation because that was one of those words that I saw in print before I ever heard it pronounced, and so I mentally pronounced it as coif mm-hmm. for an. Embarrassingly large percentage of my life before I realized, oh no, wait, that's oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I think I would have done the same if I had been in your position. Yeah, that's not a word that you would uh, think of. Oh yeah, you have to say that quaff. It's not it's quaff. different when you grow up in Cajun Louisiana, where you learn, you know, everybody learns at least a little bit of French, mm. you know, from nursery school on, mm-hmm. um, and uh, so that's sort of my default setting. You know, I did know about the metal cap because when you play in bars as rough as I do, where, you know, when the beer bottles start flying, you need something to protect your skull. You need a, a cage. A yeah. Fence. Oh, yeah. So do you wear a, a metal coif on your head when you perform? I, I can't tell you that because, you know, I don't want to give away my secrets. That's true. That's true. Um, so those were all the words. I will quickly reread the words and then you get to pick, you both get to pick a word of the episode. The whatever stands out to you in whatever way that is. Uh, and then I may ask you to do something else. So the words were coherent, coherer, cohesion, cohesive, coho, cohomology, cohort, cohosh, cohousing, and quaff. Two forms of quaff. I like coho. Coho is good. What do you like? I'm going to go with coherer. Coherer. Uh, so yeah, coherer and coho are the words of the episode. So what I normally do, because... I'm ridiculous is I sometimes I will make up a song on the spot of whatever the word of the episode is I also sometimes sing throughout the episode just like oh those words sort of sound like a song so I will sing it these are the worst possible songs ever it's usually just saying the word in a sort of rhythmic fashion but if you would like to sing a song about either one of those words go ahead and if you don't that's fine too 
It's, it's hard to do it when there's I'm hearing yeah, 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 yeah. music behind behind me because that that's that will like derail me so sure, fast. Sure, sure. But no no worries if you if it's too hard. Yeah, that's. <sighs> I know it's on the it's, tip. It's, it's, it's I'm there's hearing, something that's so close. Yeah. Coho ho and a bottle of rum. Oh. <laughs> That's better than most of the things hey. that I do, so. Hey, how about Aruba, Jamaica? Ooh, I want to take you. Down to, go down to Coco Ho. Coho yeah. Ho. Damn it. Yeah, it worked. It uh, worked. I, can't, I couldn't cohere you very well. <laughs> With all the singing in the background. Yeah. Um, cool. So, uh, re say where people can find you, because they should. Uh, they can find me at joshpaxtonpiano.com or look me up as Josh Paxton on Facebook. P-A-X-T-O-N. I hope so. That's how I've been spelling it all these years. <laughs> and BethPattersonMusic.com um, or um, uh, on Twitter is Bethodist Manifesto. I'm trying to invent my own religion just so that I can be tax Ooh. exempt. Uh, I don't really want to be worshipped because it ended up pretty badly for the last guy who was. So it's Bethodist Manifesto or, you know, Facebook. The handle is Bethodist because my name is pretty common. Excellent. So you all should go to those places and find their music because they are super, super talented. Um, and if you are interested in funny music, you should come to Fump Fest 2022 next year in the Chicago area. I hope it happens. I don't know why it wouldn't. Um, it's not like there'd be a pandemic or anything. Right. <laughs> that's impossible. No, that's impossible. That would be really funny if the word COVID was in here. But this oh, book no. is too old. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thanks again to Beth and Josh. Uh, that was a whole lot of fun. They made a whole bunch of jokes that uh, my brain was just not prepared for. And I was just really impressed with how quickly they were able to come up with funny things to say. Uh, I can't do that. Uh, so, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, of course, if you want to uh, listen to their music and uh, all, all of their links will be in the show notes. Uh, so let's finish this up with some holidays like we usually do in chile it is armed forces day it's also second day of fiestas patrias um it is day of the first public appearance of the slovak national council very important thing to celebrate all over the world it is independence day for saint kitts and nevis uh that is from the uk in 1983 it is oh we'll save that one we'll save that one for later um, in Switzerland, it is Belugs Montag. In Belgium, it is Feast Day of the Walloon region. In Switzerland, it is Federal Fast. And they, they then it says it in their language, and I can't speak that. Um, in also Chile, Military Glory Day. Chile has had like five or six holidays just in the last two days. Uh, all right, some fun holidays. <laughs> okay, uh, National Back to Church Sunday. It is National Butterscotch Pudding Day. Oh, yeah, that sounds pretty great. National Neighborhood Day. I don't know anybody in my neighborhood. Who are the people in your neighborhood? National, mm, this is a good one, Wife Appreciation Day. If you are with somebody who you call your wife, then you better go appreciate them. I appreciate mine all the time. Uh, it is National Woman Road Warrior Day, uh, and it shows a picture of somebody walking down the street, I guess. National Women's Friendship Day. So we had three three women-related holidays. Uh, I wonder if, is there something, is, is this like a women-related week that we have to know about? Uh, let's check this page, because there are some weeks starting today. Balance Awareness Week. Uh, when the when the Wii, the Nintendo Wii first came out, they had that Wii Fit thing, and that was a uh, whole big part of that was to work on your balance. Uh, my grandparents got that, and they uh, they they were working on it. I remember they they were skiing on that thing, and I, I think they really liked it. Um, so yeah, you gotta you gotta work on your balance and exercise and all that good stuff. Child Passenger Safety Awareness Week, Deaf Dog Awareness Week. There are dogs that can't hear. It's, you got to be aware of them because they may not be aware of you. Although, man, if you thought a dog smell, a uh, dog's sense of smell was good before it was deaf, now, you know, a deaf dog must have a crazy, crazy sense of smell. National Surgical Technologists Week. 
um, any other days. I have saved a couple for the end. Here we go. Okay. Uh, okay, yes, we just have the last two. It is International Talk Like a Pirate Day. Uh, I was just listening to Curiosity Daily a couple of days ago, and I don't remember how it came up, but uh, one of the hosts, Cody, who said something like he hates pirate puns and things like that. So I urge you all to uh, to tweet. I think he's at Cody Goff, G-O-U-G-H, uh, just to have fun with him. I think you should all go tweet at him uh, some your, your best pirate puns or jokes or whatever. Um, I'm sure he'll love it. But more importantly, it is <laughs> National Meow Like a Pirate Day. So, hey, cats, can you meow like a pirate? I don't even know what that would be. Meow, meow, something like that. All right, we're going to end that episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Uh, how do I do that like a pirate? Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to this podcast called The Dictionary. Um, I hope you enjoyed the last couple of episodes with guests. Uh, you know, we're, we'll, we'll try and get some more of those happening more frequently. But it, it takes time. It, it You got to figure out what your schedule is like with the person. And then you got to find a good time to record. And it takes longer and it takes longer to edit. So, you know, uh, it's my life. It, it's a little bit difficult to put have those regularly in my life right now. But maybe in the future... Uh, it would be great to have an ep- a, a guest on every single episode. Whoa. All right. The first word in this episode is we are uh, tagging tagging off uh, what we had at the end of the last one, which was coif or coif. This one is coiffeur. C-O-I-F-F-E-U-R. Coiffeur. Noun from 1824. A man who is a hairdresser. That's the end of the sentence. Um, it's, a uh, it's from a Latin word. Oh, no, sorry, French. Don't know why I said Latin. Next is, oh, so you can pronounce this a few ways. You can say coiffeurs. Even though there's no R in there, you can, you can say coiffeurs, or you can say coiffeuse, or coiffeuse. Fuzz? Fuzz? Anyway, it is spelled C-O-I-F-F-E-U-S-E. Uh, coiffeurs. Noun from 1864, a woman who is a hairdresser. So, yep, we changed it up. We changed it up from coiffeur to coiffeurs. Okay, next is coiffure. Yeah, it's a very subtle difference. Coiffure. Uh, and this one is spelled C-O-I-F-F-U-R-E. Noun from circa 1631, a style or manner of arranging the hair. All of these coiff words are hair related in some way. Uh, so coiffure is a style or a manner of arranging the hair. This is from French coiffure, which means to cover with a coiff or arrange hair. Yes. Okay, we have one more coiff word. It is coiffured. So it's like the last one with a D at the end. So this is an adjective from 1875 one being dressed as in beautifully coiffured hair number two having the hair brushed combed and curled as in stylishly coiffured women i uh i don't coiffure coiffure my hair it's long enough where i could it's a bit froey i'm not loving it it looks kind of stupid but I, i could coiffure it in some way moving on to it is three words coin of vantage but coin is spelled c-o-i-g-n coin of vantage um it doesn't say whether it's a noun or anything it is from 1605 an advantageous position an advantageous position you were in the coin of vantage uh this is from the word coin which is an earlier spelling of coin without the G, um, which means corner. Interesting. So, uh, yeah, I guess depending on the situation, if you're at the corner, you are in an advantageous position, although sometimes you could be backed in a corner, and that's not, I don't think, an advantageous position, usually. Um, We will get to coin in this episode. 
But first, we have to talk about coil. First form, noun from 1567. Number one, the synonym is turmoil. Coil? Turmoil? Number two, synonym is trouble. And then also, everyday cares and worries. As in, when we have shuffled off this mortal coil. That is a quote from Shakespeare. Uh, Everyday cares and worries. That's what coil means. I never really knew that. Second form of coil, verb from 1611, starting with transitive. One, to wind into rings or spirals, as in coil a rope. Two, to roll or twist into a shape resembling a coil. It's not a coil, but it resembles a coil. Um, As in coiled herself up on the couch. Yeah, you can't uh, wind a human into an actual ring or spiral multiple times, uh, but you can get close to being in a coil. Uh, Now we have intransitive. One, to move in a circular or spiral course. Two, to form or lie in a coil. Coilability is a noun. Um, There is a cat in this room right now, and I suspect that she is uh, coiled up. She's mostly covered by a blanket, so I can't really see, but there's a good chance that, uh, yes, that she is coiled up. Cats cats have a lot of coilability. Uh, This is from the Latin uh, French. Why do I keep on doing that? Coilir, which means to gather, and there's more at the word cull, C-U-L-L. Uh, the, the, the third form of coil, noun from 1661. There's no etymology. There's no information like there usually is. 1A1, a series of loops. 1A2, the synonym is spiral. 1B, a single loop of such a coil. 2A, a number of turns of wire wound around a core, as of iron, to create a magnetic field for an electromagnetic or an induction coil. I think uh, even in elementary school, this is a science experiment that your teacher might do. Uh, I don't remember the details, but yeah, you you wrap copper around a battery or something like that, and I I, I don't know. There's there's something something with that. Uh, you can find videos of this. I think the metal gets all heated. Anyway, it's kind of a cool cool thing. Science. It's amazing. 2B, the synonym is induction coil. 3, a series of connected pipes in rows, layers, or or windings. Wing, it's not wing dings, it's wind dings. What, what is a, win, a winding? Number 4, a roll of postage stamps. Also, a stamp from such a roll. You'd call a stamp from a coil a coil? Interesting. Okay, moving on to coin. Three forms. First form, noun from the 14th century. Number one is archaic. Ah, yes, this is the one that we saw with uh, the advantageous position, coin of vantage. This is what it's from. Uh, So 1A synonyms are corner, cornerstone, and how do you say this word? Coin? Q-U-O-I-N. I I guess, yeah, coin. That would be, that's probably the old spelling. Um, 1B, synonym is wedge. 2A, a usually flat piece of metal issued by governmental authority as money. Uh, It's funny because it's true. A flat piece of metal issued by governmental authority. Uh, Okay, 2B, metal money. That money is so metal, man. To see something resembling a coin, especially in shape. Three, something used as if it were money, as in verbal or intellectual exchange. We have a quote. Perhaps wisecracks are respectable literary coin in the U.S. I don't even know what that says. Perhaps wisecracks are respectable literary coin in the U.S. Like maybe you're using wisecracks as some sort of um financial exchange something you know what i'm talking about that is a quote from times literary supplement we have another quote um would repay him with the full coin of his mind that is a quote from ian fleming i think he's the one who wrote the uh the bond books 
Maybe that's a quote from one of the Bond books. Maybe if I find out which one, I'll put it in the show notes. I think I read the first one. I think that was the only one I read. Um, I don't have any coin in my mind. You don't want any of that. Okay, number four. Something having two different and usually opposing sides. And this is usually used in the phrase, the other side of the coin. And number five, the synonym is money. As in, I'm in it for the coin. That is a quote from Sinclair Lewis. Any etymology from Anglo-French? Well, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it is spelled C-O-I-N-G. Would you say coin, quang, cling, clang, cling, clang, clang, quang? Sorry, I just don't know how to say it. And so I said, let's just say it all the weird ways. Uh, That means wedge or corner from the Latin cunius, 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 cunius. And that means wedge. Second form of coin is a transitive verb from the 14th century. 1A, to make a coin, especially by stamping. To make, especially by stamping. And the synonym is mint. Coining it, minting it. 1B, to convert into coins. And you might be converting metal. To convert metal into coins. Number two, synonyms are create and invent, as in coin a phrase i don't think i've coined any phrases i mean maybe my tagline at the end would be a phrase that i have coined but it's not it's not a phrase that other people are saying i don't think it counts coiner is a noun that is the person or the machine doing the coining coin money is a phrase to get rich quickly hmm Uh, Number, no, third form of coin, adjective from circa 1566, one, of or relating to coins, two, operated by coins. All those arcade games that I used to play when I was a kid, they are coin, coin operated, something. Uh, Next word is coinage, noun from the 14th century, one, the act or process of coining, two, a, the synonym is coins. To be something, as a word, made up or invented. I guess you could call that coinage. You have created a word, a coinage. I don't know. Moving on. Two, uh, coincide. Coincide. Is there another way to say it? Uh, Oh, I guess you could emphasize the first syllable. Coincide or coincide. This is a verb. I think it is just intransitive from 1719. 1A, to occupy the same place in space or time. Well, that's impossible. 1B, to occupy exactly corresponding or equivalent positions on a scale or in a series. 2, to correspond in nature, character, or function. 3, to be in accord or agreement. Synonym is concur. Uh, And then another synonym is the word agree. We are agreeing. We concur that, 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 that. We agree. We concur. We're in coinciding. I don't know where we're going with this. Um, The etymology says this is from Latin co plus incidere, which means to fall on, which is from in plus cadere, which means to fall. So cadere is fall, then you add an in at the beginning and it becomes to fall on, and then you add a co at the beginning um, and it becomes coincide, I guess. Uh, There's more at the word chance. It sounds like go inside. Go inside, coincide. I can't think of a joke related to that so quickly. So we're just going to talk about our last word. It is coincidence. Oh, it's a coincidence. Noun from 1605. One, the act or condition of coinciding. Have you ever thought about that? I haven't. Two things coinciding. They become a coincidence. The synonym is correspondence. Hmm. Number two, the occurrence of events that happen at the same time by accident, but seem to have some connection. Also, any of these occurrences. 
Those were all the words. We did it. Uh, so, real quick, I have to reread them. We have coiffeur, coiffeurs, coiffure, coiffured, coin of vantage, coil, coin, coinage, coincide, and coincidence. Well, I am going to pick coincidence as the word of the episode because I often find there is a coincidence to two events that happen at the same time by accident but seem to have some connection. Uh, yes, I love it when it happens. And it seems like when you start to pay attention to it, it happens even more. And uh, yeah, I like, I like coincidences a lot. Coincidence, coincidence, coincidence is when two things happen at the same time that are seemingly unrelated but have some connection. <sighs> Let's read the holidays. In Nepal, it is Constitution Day. In, um, it is not fully recognized, but it is Independence Day of South Ossetia. South Ossetia? In Thailand, it is National Youth Day. In Azerbaijan, it is Oil Workers Day. In Germany, it is Universal Children's Day. So maybe it should be in the universe. It is uh, the first day of Sukkot. That is a Jewish observance. Um, <laughs> yes, I think it is time for the fun holidays. National Fried Rice Day. I was once at a place where they made the fried rice right there at the table. It wasn't, they had a, they had a super hot plate, and I think they had the rice on there, and I didn't eat this one, but they had, I think they put the egg in there, and it was all very steamy and sizzly. Ooh, National Gibberish Day. I should do one of these episodes all in gibberish. Uh, National Pepperoni Pizza Day. Now, now I don't eat the regular pepperoni pizza anymore. I sometimes will have vegan pepperoni, but uh, back in the day when I was eating meat, this was my pizza. That was pepperoni pizza. Didn't care for the sausage. Um, what's funny, though, is that the picture that they used, it looks like it is a pizza with pepperoni and sausage. You can't put a picture of sausage for National Pepperoni Pizza Day. Anyway, National Punch Day. This is the drink punch. Whatever whatever version you like. National String Cheese Day. And uh, let's check this page, but that might be it. Uh, we read that one. We read that one. We re Ooh, National Queso Day. That's cheese. It is also Pichu Paksha. What is this? I have to click on it to find out. Um, Hindus are bound by their dharma or religion to pray for the souls of their ancestors. It's a debt they must pay to stay happy. During Pitru Paksha or Shrad, a 16 lunar day period in the Hindu calendar which starts on this day, people offer prayers, food, and water to their ancestors. I like it. I like it. Um, and it is respect for the aged day. Respect those who are aged. Uh, I think that is going to be it for this episode. Um, is there anything that I can say? Oh, you should watch the, the show Hacks if you're an adult and you have HBO Max. Oh, Hacks on Max. Um, it is a really, really good show. Uh, I recommend it. That's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is... Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Please, if you could, rate this podcast and review this podcast and subscribe to this podcast on whatever podcast platform you're listening to it on. Uh, you know, th th I gotta say those things because then it helps other people find it. And uh, yeah, that's all good stuff. And you can email me at dictionarypod at gmail.com. Instagram, Twitter is at dictionarypod. Uh, if you would like to leave me a voicemail, you can call the Google Voice number in the show notes. Um, and if you wanted to perform a 5 to 10, ten second theme song, that would be a whole lot of fun. And you can uh, email that to me. Uh, so, there is a word in this episode, uh, a couple of words that are adult related, but it's kind of like the most proper way to discuss this uh, adult concept. So, we'll get there. Uh, all right, the first word is coincident, C-O-I-N-C-I-D-E-N-T. C -I -N -C -I 
D-E-N-T, coincident. It is an adjective from circa 1587, one of similar nature. Synonym is harmonious, as in a theory coincident with the facts. They have a similar nature. They are all together. Number two, occupying the same space or time, as in coincident events. Uh, The synonym, again, for everything is the word contemporary. Uh, Interesting. I don't think I would have thought of that. Coincidentally is an adverb. Uh, Next is coincidental. Coincidental. This is when your teeth take up the same space and time as your other teeth. Coincidental. Get it? This is an adjective from circa 1800. One resulting from a coincidence as in a coincidental resemblance. Two, occurring or existing at the same time, as in coincidental deaths. Deaths that happen all together at the same time. Next is coincidentally. Coincid- you could say coincidentally or dentally. Either one. Adverb from 1837. One, in a coincidental manner. Also by coincidence. As in, lonely singles who meet coincidentally and click. That's a quote from People Magazine. Coincidentally, they met and then they clicked. Number two, it is, it is, it is or seems coincidental that. That is the definition. As in, coincidentally, the dog died exactly one year after his owner did. This is a very sad example. I don't like that. Uh, next is co-infection, noun from 1974, concurrent infection of a cell or organism with two organisms. Uh, so they both have, were infected at the same time or something. Co-infect is a transitive verb. Next is coin of the realm, four words. Uh, this is from 1816, one, the legal money of a country is called coin of the realm. It sounds like something in Dungeons and Dragons. Number two, something valued or used as if it were money in a, in a particular sphere, as in information is the coin of the realm in the capital. Uh, that is a quote from Eloise Salholz et al. And that means that there's other people. So they wrote a book, Eloise and others wrote a book or something And that quote was in there. Next is coin op. Coin hyphen op. Noun from 1961. It is a self-service laundry where the machines are operated by coins. And uh, I guess it's a little surprising that they don't have coin operated in here. But I guess coin op just uh, is good. Coin operated. Arcades. Laundry. Other things. Next is co-insurance, noun from circa 1889. One, joint assumption of risk, as by two underwriters with another. Two, insurance, as fire insurance, in which the insured is obligated to maintain coverage on a risk at a stipulated percentage of its total value or in the event of loss, suffer a penalty in proportion to the deficiency. Oh my god, anytime I hear or read anything about insurance, my brain just shuts down because I just, I mean, I get the concept, but that is about it. Relatedly, co-insure, transitive verb from 1886. You know, I hope there are kids listening so they can learn about insurance way younger than they probably should. I probably should have learned about this stuff when I was younger. Okay, co-insure, transitive verb from 1886, which I said to insure jointly. Co-insurer is a noun. Next is coyer. I think that's how you would say it. Coyer. It is spelled C-O-I-R. Noun from 1582. A stiff, coarse fiber from the outer husk of a coconut. The, the coarse fiber on the outside of a coconut is called the coyer? I had no idea. This is from a Tamil word. Tamil is the language. It is spelled K-A-Y-I-R-U. Kairu? 
That means rope. So maybe they make rope out of this uh, coconut fiber stuff. That's kind of cool. Okay, next is Koistrel. Koistrel. Noun from 1575. It is archaic and it means a mean fellow. <laughs> uh, that's a great definition. It's just a mean fellow. A koistrel. And a synonym is a word I've never seen before. Varlet. V-A-R-L-E-T. I, I guess a varlet is a mean fellow. You should use this in your everyday language, Spencer. Okay, I'll try. Uh, this is from Middle French Costilier, which is a soldier carrying a short sword. Uh, from Custil, which is short sword. From the Latin Cultellus, cul 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 that means knife. Yes, a knife is an extremely short sword. And there's more at the word cutlass. 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 Next is coition. Coition. Noun from 1615. Ah, the synonym is our next word, which is coitus. C-O-I-T-U-S. Coition and coitus. Uh, it's the same thing. And coitional is an adjective. And the etymology, we uh, actually, so the next word coitus doesn't really have much etymology. So we'll just say this one here. It is from the Latin coitio, which means a coming together. Uh, from the, I guess, would this be French or Anglo-French? Coer? 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 Uh, that means also to come together. Plus co, oh, I guess coer is actually Latin, so it would be coere. That means to come together. From co plus ire, which means to go. Ire is go. Uh, and then there's more of the word issue. So here we go with coitus. Wow, you can pronounce it a few ways. You could say... Co coitus, you could say coitus, or just coitus. I've only heard coitus. Now I, I think I think I should say coitus. That doesn't make any. That it it just sounds weird. Anyway, it is a noun from 1845. I feel like it would have been before that, but okay. Uh, physical union of male and female genitalia accompanied by rhythmic movements. <laughs> Oh, what a what a sterile scientific way to describe that. And then the synonym is the number one definition for the word sexual intercourse. And then it says to compare to the synonym. Uh, I guess it would be the synonym orgasm. You'll have to wait for the O's and the S's for those definitions. Coital is an adjective and coitally is an adverb. So relatedly, we have coitus interruptus it is two words interruptus it's it looks very similar to the word interrupt uh it is a noun from 1900 coitus in which the penis is withdrawn prior to ejaculation to prevent the deposit of sperm into the vagina and of course this would often be used uh usually used to prevent uh pregnancy uh, okay, next is, how would you say this? You would say cojones, I guess. Oh, wow, so we're uh, still in the same world. <laughs> cojones. I actually, I think I forgot to read this word when I got there. It is spelled C-O-J-O-N-E-S. Uh, this is a noun from 1932. It is slang. Number one is the number three definition for the word nerve. And... Also slang number two, the synonym is testes. Uh, and if you don't know that word, it's also testicles. Maybe you know that. And because this is Spanish, and it literally means testicles. So sometimes you might hear, oh, they got a lot of cojones. All right, our last word is the word coke, C-O-K-E. We have two forms in this episode, and we've got a couple more in the next episode. So the first form of coke is a noun from 1669. The residue of coal left after destructive distillation and used as fuel. Also, a similar residue left by other materials distilled to dryness. And those other materials, an example, would be petroleum. Uh, let's see, this is perhaps from the dialect coke, kolk, which means core, from Middle English. 
It is akin to the Swedish kalk, uh, which means pith. Pith. Isn't, I think that's related to coal. Anyway, next is the second form of coke. This is the verb form from 1763. One transitive definition to change into coke. So that's probably the coal stuff. And then the intransitive says to become coke or like coke. So the words today were incident, incidental, incidentally, co-infection. Now wait, did I was I reading these words correctly? I'm not sure what the brain did. Coincident, coincidental, coincidentally. I think I forgot the co part in my brain. I think I actually said it. Anyway, let's go back to the words. Co-infection, coin of the realm, coin op, co-insurance, co-insure, uh, co coer, coi coyer, coyer, coistral, coition, coitus, coitus interruptus, cojones, and coke. Well, maybe we'll just pick coitus as the word of the episode because this is the thing that made all of us exist. Um, I guess technically it's possible if you were a quote-unquote test tube baby. That's not the term that they use anymore. But but yes, in general, for the vast majority of people, coitus is what has made us appear. (laughs) That's that's a a very generalized statement. But uh, coitus has made us appear in this world. That's a song. All right, let's talk about the holidays. September 21st. Oh, it's like, it's fall. It's it's fall. Today or tomorrow is officially the first day of fall. Yay. Brazil has Arbor Day. The Philippines has commemoration of the Declaration of Martial Law. Poland has Customs Service Day. Ghana has Founders Day and National Volunteer Day. It is Independence Day for Armenia from the Soviet Union in 1991. Independence Day for Belize from the UK in 1981. Independence Day for Malta from the UK in 1964. It is International Day of Peace. Yay, peace. Someday, maybe. Ooh, National Pecan Cookie Day. In Bolivia, it is Students' Day. In Russia, it is victory over the Golden Horde in the Battle of Kulkekova. Kulikova. Let's check this page for anything else. Is it anything else? Um, ba, 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 autumn. Prince's Day in the Netherlands. Also the opening of Dutch Parliament. Same thing or same day. Um, National Radio Day in Chile. Chile. Chile? Chile? Chile. Uh, fun holidays. Escapology Day. What is escapology? Is it this escaping from a, a thing? I don't know. It is Get Ready Day. Get ready for what? Miniature Golf Day. Ooh. What what day of the week is this? I would like to go do some miniature golf. I haven't done that in a while. Oh, it's a Tuesday. I don't think I'll be able to. Um, what else? It is no National Chai Day. That is the tea. Chai tea. I just had some yesterday. I'll have some chai tea. No, that's redundant. I'll just have some chai on September 21st. National Farm Safety Day for Kids. Uh, If you got kids working on your farm, make sure they're safe. National IT Professionals Day. I will thank my, the people who work in the IT department at my job. Pause the World Day. I don't think that's possible, but I will try to pause the world. Take a loved one to the doctor day. Even if they don't have to go to the doctor, just take them anyway. Uh, oh, World Alzheimer's Day. Ugh, this is such a big problem. I know people who are or have dealt with this in some form. Um, hopefully, we'll find a cure, but I think the best thing, and I don't know how much proof there is to this, but I think the best thing is uh, stay physically and mentally active. I think that there is at least some evidence that says doing those things will help uh, slow this process down. Um, also, don't get any head injuries. I've heard that head injuries can um, make this happen sooner than maybe it would have otherwise. So protect your head. Wear a helmet. Just all the time. It is World Gratitude Day. So thank you, stuff. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Harvest Moon Festival. Mid-Autumn Festival. It's not mid-autumn. It's the beginning of autumn. Mid-Autumn Moon Festival. I think that's everything. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time tomorrow.
This is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the episode that is today. This is now. Um, it's This is the podcast called The Dictionary. You should know that already. Uh, so we are at the top of page 242. Um, and we're just going to read the words. Let's just do it. it this will be a little bit of a shorter episode because uh, the first word in the next episode is very long. And it's uh, it goes right over the middle of the page. So the first word is the third form of Coke. This is a noun from circa 1903. And the synonym is cocaine, which we read back when we were in the COC section. Next is Coke. It's not technically the fourth form. It has a capital C. It is a trademark, if you didn't know that. And it is used, it just says used for a cola drink. I mean, so there's obviously Coke, the brand Coke. And then, but sometimes people use that word for other uh, cola drinks. Uh, You know, it's like Hoover and Kleenex. It's just a very generic term. I, I don't say that, but some people do. Okay, next, this is related to uh, the first word in this episode, that Coke, cocaine one. This is Coke head, one word, noun from 1922. A person who uses cocaine compulsively. This is, this, this happens. Try not to do this. Don't, just don't, don't do this. You don't want to be called a Coke head. Please. All right, next is, I guess you would say, col. It is spelled C-O-L, first form. Noun from uh, 1853. It is the number three definition for the word saddle. It's also called a call. Second form of that word, which now is just C-O-L, coal. It is an abbreviation for one, colonial, two, colony, three, color or colored, four, column, and five, council. And the third form of that same word, C-O-L or C-O-L-L, abbreviation for one, collateral, two, collect or collected or collection. Uh, There is a horror series that uses those words sort of. Number three, college or collegiate. Next is C-O-L again with a capital C, abbreviation for one, colonel, two, that would be like the military colonel, two, Colorado, and three, Colossians. Uh, I guess that will be Colossians. I don't even know if I'm saying that correctly. We'll see that later. Um, guess what? We have COL again, all caps, abbreviation for one, colonel, again, and two, cost of living. You adults know all about your cost of living. We now have a prefix, which is also C-O-L. This is the first form, and it says to see a different prefix, prefix, C-O-M, C-O-L, C-O-M. We now have the second form of the C-O-L prefix, but it could also be C-O-L-I or C-O-L-O. Um, and it means, number one, colon, as in colitis or colostomy. And then number two, um, it just means E. coli. That is that nasty stuff. Uh, As in the examples, coliform or colophage. So the etymology for the E. coli one, uh, it actually gives the whole name for E. coli, which is Escherichia coli. Don't know if I said that correctly. That is a species of colon bacillus. Don't try not to get, just, just try not to get this stuff, please. Okay, next is cola, C-O-L-A, first form. This is not the cola you think. That's the second form. This is the plural of the word colon, C-O-L-O-N. So multiple colons would be cola. I had no idea. Second form of cola, noun from 1920, a carbonated soft drink. A carbonated soft drink colored usually with caramel and flavored usually with extracts from cola nuts and that cola nut is with a k Uh, and this is from coca-cola which is a trademark next is cola all caps abbreviation for one cost of living adjustment and two cost of living allowance 
Next is colander. Noun from the 14th century, a perforated utensil for washing or draining food. This is from Middle English, colindore. Colindor? Probably modified of Old Occitan, colindor, from Middle Latin, collatorium, from the Latin colare, which means to sieve. Uh, that word, by the way, is spelled S-I-E-V-E. And yes, colanders are also sometimes called sieves. Like, my brain is a sieve, a steel sieve trap, whatever that phrase is. Um, from colum, which means sieve. That's that. Moving on to colonut with a C. It is a variation of colonut with a K. I don't think the colonuts taste like pop, cola, soda. Next is colatitude. Oh, you got a lot of colatitude. No, it is co-latitude. Co-latitude, noun from 1790, the complement of the latitude. Latitude, you're looking so great today. I, I don't understand what this is. Moving on to cola tree. It is a variation of cola tree with a K. Next is Colby with a capital C, noun from 1932. It is a moist, mild cheese similar to cheddar. And this is from Colby, Wisconsin. Wisconsin is the land of cheese. Maybe we should rename the state. Okay, next is Coal Cannon. Coal Cannon, C-O-L-C-A-N-N-O-N. -N -N, noun from circa 1785. It is potatoes and cabbage boiled and mashed together with butter and seasoning. I had not heard of the name of this, but that sounds tasty. Um, this is Irish. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it is something like Kalkyanan. It literally means white speckled cabbage. So probably when you mash it up, it looks like the cabbage is speckled with white, which is probably from the potatoes. And yeah, that is a very, very Irish sounding dish. Next is, all right, we got two... Well, at least one scientific... I don't know what I'm saying. Let's just read them. They look scientific to me. Oh, yes, at least one of them is. Uh, col colchicine or colchicine. C-O-L-C-H-I-C-I-N-E. Noun from circa 1847. A poisonous alkaloid, C-22, H-25, N-O-6, that inhibits mitosis. So it doesn't allow for mitosis to happen is extracted from the corms or seeds of the autumn crocus and is used especially in the treatment of gout and to produce polyploidy in plants. Polyploidy. Produce polyploidy in plants. The scientific name for the autumn crocus is Colchicum autumnale. And crocus is C-R-O-C-U-S. And next is our last word. It is colchicum or colchicum. C-O-L-C-H-I-C-U-M. Colchicum. Noun from 1597. One, any of a genus of old world corm producing herbs of the lily family with flowers that resemble crocuses. So yes, this is obviously related to the last one we had. Um, yeah, corm. It's not corn, like corn on the cob. It is C-O-R-M. And the example of this genus is colchicum. Uh, so it's just the same word with a capital C. And number two, the dried corm, or dried seeds of autumn crocus, containing colchicine, colchicine uh, possessing emetic, diuretic, and cathartic action, and used to treat gout. Uh, let's see, this is from the Latin uh, colchicum, a kind of plant with a poisonous root. I guess that's what it means. From the Greek colchicon, which literally means product of colchis or colchis. So the words today were coke, coke, cokehead, col, 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 cola, cola, col, colander, colonut, colatitude, cola tree, colby, Col cannon, colchicine, and colchicum. Colchicum. 
I think I will just pick Cole Cannon as the word of the episode because, I don't know, it's food and it sounds great. Um, Cole Cannon. Take them potatoes, take that cabbage, mash it up, boil it up, season it up, and you got some Cole Cannon. All right, let's talk about the holidays. It is American Business Women's Day in the U.S. It's business women. Um, let's see. Related to the autumnal equinox, uh, Japan is celebrating that. Um, let's see. It's Mabon in the Northern Hemisphere, Ostara in the Southern Hemisphere. That is the neo-pagan wheel of the year. In Latvia, it is the first day of Mikeli. Those are all about autumn. It is Independence Day in Bulgaria from the Ottoman Empire in 1908. Independence Day for Mali from France in 1960. In Estonia, it is Resistance Fighting Day. It is... We'll save that one for the end. Anything else that we missed? We got that, we got that, we got that. Is the start of spring in Peru and South Africa and other Southern Hemisphere places. I think we got enough of those. Let's look at the how fun holidays. Chainmail Day. Chainmail. That's heavy. It is Dear Diary Day. It is International Day of Radiant Peace. National Centenarians Day. Those are the people who have lived to be 100. Uh, we'll, we'll see if I make it. We'll see if I make it. But celebrate all the 100-year-olds that you know. Um, National Elephant Appreciation Day. I, I appreciate you, elephants. National Falls Prevention Awareness Day. Is that people falling? Is that autumn? I'm not sure. It is National Girls' Night In Day. So, girls, you can't go out. You got to stay in. Girls' Night In. But it's it's a day. It's funny because it's Girls' Night In Day. Night, day, get it? Okay. It is National Hobbit Day. And it shows a picture of one of the Hobbit houses. And I uh, am lucky enough to say that I have actually seen one of these or all of these in person. Um, very, very cool. I highly suggest going if you can. So I shall uh, act like a Hobbit all day and eat. Oh, maybe I'll eat some Cole Cannon because I bet you bet you they made something like that. Uh, National Ice Cream Cone Day. Oh, yeah, I could go for some ice cream. National Legwear Day. National Online Recovery Day, National White Chocolate Day. It is Proposal Day. Propose to somebody if you want to today. See you at the pole. And it shows a picture of the flag. So it's like a flagpole. I'll meet you at the pole. Don't put your tongue on the pole in winter. First day of fall, World Carefree Day. Uh, let's check if there's... Oh, there was a week. I missed a week two days ago. It is National Rehabilitation Awareness Week. Uh, so apologies that I missed that, but we're still in the week, so it counts. And then, is there anything else? We got all of those, I think, National Singles Day. So maybe that's why it's National Girls' Night In Day, if they're single. I don't know. National Temperature Control Day. And then, lastly, it is uh, World Rhino Day. Just confirming that I've got that correct. Yeah, World Rhino Day. We got to protect the rhinos. They're they're slowly going extinct. There's different kinds and it's really really sad. So I uh, thank you to all the people who are in Africa particularly who are uh actually like there. There's they've got like security guards. It's so crazy. Protect the rhinos. Don't buy anything with rhino horn in them. It doesn't it doesn't work. It doesn't make sense. Just just don't don't do that. Please. And thank you. All right. I'm going to end the episode. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Welcome to this book that you've never heard of before. <clears throat> um, all of the words in this episode and the next episode start with cold, which is our first word in this episode. So maybe we will just read that first. Um, there are a ton of definitions for this first form of cold. There are three forms. The first form, adjective, from before the 12th century. 1a, having or being a temperature that is uncomfortably low for humans. That is rather subjective, depending on who you're talking to. Cold for somebody could be 
totally comfortable for somebody else. It's all relative. As in the example, it is cold outside today. It has been in the 80s and 90s recently and it is not cold outside. It's very gross and humid and I get sweaty and I don't like it. We have another example, a cold, drafty attic. 1B, having a relatively low temperature or one lower than normal or expected, as in, the bath water has gotten cold. Oh no, I can't take a bath in cold water. I have to heat it up. 1C, not heated, as 1C1. Uh, 1C1 is talking about food. Served without heating, especially after initial cooking or processing. I think last night I had a dream where I pulled out some sort of frozen frozen thing, you know, like a vegan chicken nugget thing that you're supposed to cook in the oven. And for some reason, I think I was going to eat them cold. Why? That, you, you can't eat those things right out of the freezer. You're going to break your teeth. Um, anyway, we're talking about food. Cold cereal is an example. Also, cold roast beef. 1C2, served chilled or with ice, as in a cold drink. 1C3, involving processing without the use of heat, as in cold working of steel. So, no heat with that steel. 2A, marked by a lack of the warmth of normal human emotion, friendliness, or compassion. As in, a cold stare. Also as in, got a cold reception. And then there's more definition. Not moved to enthusiasm. As in, the movie leaves me cold. I feel like I should say that whole thing in a cold way. Not moved to enthusiasm. Okay, next is to be not colored or affected by personal feeling or bias. And the synonyms are detached and indifferent. As in, cold chronicles recorded by an outsider, and that is a quote from Andrew Saris, S-A-R-R-I-S. And then also the synonyms impersonal and objective, as in cold facts, also as in cold reality. Next is 2C, marked by sure familiarity, and a synonym is pat, P-A-T, as in had her lines Cold weeks before opening night. Uh, Oh, had her lines cold weeks before opening night. There should have been a comma. My brain would have put a comma in there to show that there's a a pause. Um, Okay, number three. Conveying the impression of being cold as 3A synonyms are depressing and gloomy as in cold gray skies. 3B it is the 6A definition for the world word cool, which will be later, not too long from where we are now. 4A, marked by the loss of normal body heat, as in cold hands, especially the synonym dead. The loss of body heat, yes, when a body is dead, it is not producing the heat, so it gets cold very quickly. 4B, Giving the appearance of being dead. Synonym is unconscious. As in, passed out cold. So not dead, but, you know, unconscious. 5A, having lost refresh... No, having lost freshness or vividness. And the synonym is stale. As in, dogs trying to pick up a cold scent. They ain't gonna find it. 5B, far off the mark. Uh, not close to finding or solving, and this is used especially in children's games. Far, oh yes, hot and cold. Oh, you're getting warmer. Oh no, now you're getting colder. I I know adults have had fun with my brain on that game when I was a kid. Now, now I don't play that game no more. Uh, where were we? Five C, marked by poor or unlucky performance, as in. The team's shooting turned cold in the second half. 5B, no, D. 5D, not prepared or suitably warmed up. Coldish is an adjective. Coldly is an adverb. Coldly. Coldness is a noun. 
and a phrase in cold blood. Uh, that means with premeditation. And then the synonym is deliberately, as in was killed in cold blood. And that is also the name of a book that is uh, supposedly very good. And I started reading it and I didn't get around to finishing it. So I really need to finish that book in cold blood. Okay. Oh, is there any interesting etymology <laughs> from the Old High German kalt, with a K, which means cold, from the Latin gelu, which means frost, from gelare, which means to freeze. Interesting. Okay, now we have the second form of cold, noun from the 13th century. One, b a bodily sensation produced by loss or lack of heat. As in, they died of the cold. They died of the cold. All right. I guess that makes sense. Two, a condition of low temperature. As in, extremes of heat and cold. Especially this, uh, just the definition, cold weather. Number three, a bodily disorder popularly associated with chilling. And then specifically the synonym, common cold. The phrase out in the cold means deprived of benefits given others, as in the plan benefits management, but leaves labor out in the cold. The plan benefits management, but leaves labor out in the cold. They are deprived of benefits given others. Let's not leave anybody out in the cold, because that is not a good thing to do. Leave them in the warm. Okay, now we have the third form of cold adverb from 1889. One, with utter finality. And the synonyms are absolutely and completely. As in, turned down cold. Turned down cold. Also, the synonym abruptly. As in, sorry for the pause there. My, I had a yawn coming and I had to put it, put it down. Put it down, yawn. Uh, st abruptly, as in, stopped them cold. 2A, without introduction or advance notice, as in, walked in cold to apply for a job. And hey, you never know, you might get the job. 2B, without preparation or warm-up, as in, was asked to perform the solo cold. I, uh, I kind of do this podcast cold. You know, I read the words firstly but i don't read the definitions and so yeah I, I go into this cold and sometimes it works okay and sometimes it just is what it is okay next is cold blooded two words with a hyphen adjective from 1595 1a done or acting without consideration compunction or clemency as in cold blooded murder 1d Synonyms are matter-of-fact and emotionless, as in a cold-blooded assessment. Number two, having cold blood. Specifically, having a body temperature not internally regulated, but approximating that of the environment. I feel like when I was a kid and I learned this, I, I don't know if I fully understood what warm-blooded meant versus cold-blooded, but... Um, you know, this was an okay definition, but basically uh, animals that are cold-blooded like lizards, uh, they, they get the heat into their body from the, from the, the environment. Um, they, they can't produce their own heat. Uh, and then us mammals, we're warm-blooded, so we are able to produce our own heat internally. Uh, so that's what that means. It doesn't literally mean that you're blood is cold or your blood is warm, I don't think. Um, it just means that you're able to produce heat within your body or not. And uh, I'm glad that I can produce heat by myself because otherwise I would have to go live out in the desert and sit in front of the sun to warm up. And, uh, you know, that's not very conducive to, to my, my life. Okay, number three is, uh, could also be just cold blood instead of cold blooded. Um, this is of mixed or inferior breeding, cold blood, cold blooded. And then number four, noticeably sensitive to cold. Cold bloodedly is an adverb and cold bloodedness is a noun. 
Next is cold call, two words. A lot of these cold things are going to be two words. Cold call noun from 1966. A telephone call soliciting business made directly to a potential cu- potential customer without prior contact or without a lead. Um, and uh, these are these are really hard things to do. If you gotta call somebody up with no 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 able to warm them up or anything, it's hard to do a lot of cold calls. Uh, telemarketers, I guess that's what they do a lot. Cold call is a verb. Cold cash is next. Noun from 1920. Five, and it just means money in hand. If you got the stuff, the cash in your hand, it is cold, I guess. Next is cold chisel. Two words, noun from 1699. A chisel made of tool steel, tool steel in a strength, shape, and temper suitable for chipping or cutting cold metal. I've not heard of it, this specific type of chisel. Next is cold cock. One word, uh, transitive verb from circa 1918, and it means to knock unconscious. Hit them so hard, you've cold cocked them, and uh, I don't know why. I don't know why it means, why they put these words together to mean that, but they did. Next is cold comfort. Two words, noun from the 14th century. Quite limited sympathy, consolation, or encouragement. Limited in your sympathy, your consolation. Well, I don't want anybody to cold comfort me. I would rather have some warm comfort, I guess. Next is cold cream. Two words, noun from 1693. A soothing and cleansing cosmetic. Next is cold cuts. Two words, noun from 1859. Sliced assorted cold cooked meats. They've been cooked, but then they were left to be cold and then packaged, and it's they're cold. See, that's right in the name. It makes sense. They're cold, and they've been cut. They're cold cuts. But uh, yeah, some of these other ones, I don't, it doesn't make no sense. Next is cold duck. It's the bird, the duck. Two words. Noun from 1969. A beverage that consists of a blend of sparkling burgundy and champagne. I don't think I've heard of this. I was not expecting it to be a drink. Um, this is a translation of the German Kalte Ente. Kalt Ent? I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, so it is sparkling burgundy and champagne mixed together, and it becomes a cold duck. And I don't know wow, how that name became the name, but it clearly came from that German. Uh, interesting. I wonder what it tastes like. Next is cold-eyed. Two words with a hyphen. Adjective from 1819, cold in manner or appearance, and then especially coolly dispassionate, as in cold-eyed analysis. Next is cold feet, two words, noun from 1893, apprehension or doubt strong enough to prevent a planned course of action. Um, man, I guess that makes sense, but... It's, I don't know. I wouldn't, I just wouldn't describe it that way. Cold feet. You're nervous. You're nervous about the thing. Apprehension or doubt strong enough to prevent a plan. Yeah, you got such bad cold feet that you didn't do the thing that you were going to do, I guess. And then lastly is cold fish. Two words, noun from 1924. A cold, aloof person. I, I, I don't want any cold fish in my life. I don't need them to be cold, aloof I can deal with, cold I'm not so sure about. So let's reread the words. We had cold, cold blooded, cold call, cold cash, cold chisel, cold cock, cold comfort, cold cream, cold cuts, cold duck, cold eyed, cold feet, sounds so weird to say these words, and cold fish. Hmm. Well, I mean, cold is a pretty good generic word, but Maybe I'll pick cold duck as the word of the episode because, uh, I don't know, it's a drink that sounds good and it has an interesting name. And, uh, yeah, we sing a song about cold duck. Pop open that champagne and popping open the burgundy. I don't 
think I'm using my words correctly, but you pour them in a glass, maybe 50-50, and that becomes a cold duck. Let's talk about the holidays. For this today, September 23rd, in Puerto Rico, it is Grito de Lares. Mm, if I knew more Spanish, I could figure out what that meant. In Lithuania, it is Holocaust Memorial Day. In Kyrgyzstan, it is Kyrgyz Language Day. And I'm sure I'm pronouncing that terribly. In Saudi Arabia, it is National Day. In Brunei, it is Teacher's Day. Um, it is International Day of Sign Languages. And yes, all different cultures and languages around the world have their own version of sign language. So yes, lots and lots of sign languages. Um, I think we will save that one for the end. It is Saint Padre Pio, whatever that is. Mm, in France, it is Gastronomy Day. Let's go read some fun holidays. It is Energize Day. It's a day today. Day today, not energize, energize. Don't know what that means. National Checkers Day. National Dogs and Politics Day. Surprisingly, there are actually some dogs who have been voted mayor of town, so I guess this is the day for them. National Great American Pot Pie Day. Haven't had a pot pie in a long time. National Snack Stick Day. So I think that's just like beef jerky sticks of meat. Remind Me Thursday. That's today. It shows a picture of some dogs in a cage, and that makes me sad. It is Restless Legs Awareness Day. Just got to keep on doing stuff. Teal Talk Day. Is this the color teal? It looks like there's a picture of a doctor's jacket or something. I don't know what that is. Teal Talk. Um, Redhead Appreciation Day. All of those redheaded people. Uh, I guess it's some people think it's kind of funny to call them gingers, but there's, there's no no different than the rest of us other than I think that they have a higher tolerance for pain, theoretically. Um, and then lastly, it is Celebrate Bisexuality Day, but there's another name. Where did it go? There's another name, which is Bi Visibility Day. So uh, all of you people who identify as bisexual, uh, I guess today is your day to um, talk about it and make sure that people are aware that you exist because I think way more people are... Uh, would be considered bisexual than, than most people realize or than some people would like to admit, more than likely. Anyway, hello, bye, friends. Uh, we're going to end the episode there. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. In this episode, we will be finishing the cold words. And yeah. Okay, let's just talk about the words. Uh, the first one is cold frame. Two words. Noun from 1851. A usually glass or plastic covered frame without artificial heat. So that makes it cold. Used to protect plants and seedlings outdoors. And there is a picture of a cold frame. Let's see. So it looks like it's a frame that is sort of like a large, uh, like a picture frame, but it's on the ground. It's very, it's very deep. It's like a shadow box kind of. Um, and then there's lots of little seedlings growing in it. And then there is also a, a way to cover it. It's like a, a, another frame, like a window that you can put on top of it uh, so you can see what's going on in there. It's like a tiny little greenhouse, but it's cold. All right, next is cold front, two words, noun from 1921, an advancing edge of a cold air mass. You hear this on the Weather Channel all the time. Cold front, warm front, high pressure, low pressure. It's just cold air coming towards you. All right, next is cold hearted, one word, adjective from 1606, marked by lack of sympathy, interest, or sensitivity, as in cold-hearted criminals also is in a cold-hearted refusal cold-heartedly is an adverb and cold-heartedness is a noun and uh you know my personal opinion of this word is just that it's um i don't i don't like it when people are cold-hearted i think we need more sympathy interest and sensitivity that's my thoughts
Next is cold press, two words with a hyphen. This is a transitive verb from 1893. To press, as olives, without applying heat from an external source. Also, to extract, oil is the example, by cold pressing. So olives can be pressed in this cold press oil, probably olive oil if you want to put them together. There's lots of other things I'm sure that are cold pressed, uh, but it's but it's no heat. You can't put any heat because then it's going to get cooked and that's going to mess it up, I guess. I don't know enough about the science of this, but I've heard of it. Next is cold shoulder. Two words, noun from 1816. Intentionally cold or unsympathetic treatment. As in, got the cold shoulder from an old friend. Well, there are so many possible explanations of why. Maybe it was a misunderstanding. Maybe you did something that made them give you the cold shoulder. So so many options. Uh, cold shoulder with a hyphen is a transitive verb. I don't know. I don't know why they have to add the hyphen. Can it be just the same thing? I don't. It doesn't make no sense to me. There, maybe there's some grammatical reason for that. Next is cold sore. Two words, noun from 1870. A group of fluid-filled blisters appearing about or within the mouth that are caused by a herpes simplex virus and upon rupturing form crusts. <laughs> I, I Maybe I should have read that one beforehand and said... A little uh, little warning. It's it's kind of a gross definition, but it is accurate. Uh, it is called also fever blister, and then you can compare to the synonym canker sore, which I feel like that must be the same the same thing, or at least close enough. Hmm. Fluid filled blisters. We're gonna move on from gross cold sores to cold storage. Two words, noun from 1877. You can store your cold sores in the cold frame. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Number one, storage, as of food, in a cold place for preservation. Number two, a condition of being held or continued without being acted on. And a synonym is abeyance, A-B-E-Y-A-N-C-E. A A condition of being held or continued without being acted on. Cold. I, I don't know if I get that one. Next is cold store. Two words, noun from 1895. This store is so cold. Can you please put on the heat? Uh, this is just a building for cold storage because you, you got you to gotta store probably produce and other things pretty cold so it doesn't uh, spoil and go bad. Next is cold sweat. Two words, noun from 1582. Concurrent perspiration. I had to... Focus on that word, perspiration, not press, per, 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 perspiration, and chill, usually associated with fear, pain, or shock. The body does really crazy things that you are not even aware of. Uh, if you're nervous, your body will just start to sweat, or what, I mean, people sweat for so many different kinds of reasons, and you are just not conscious of it whatsoever. The body's crazy. All right, next is cold turkey. Two words, first form, noun from 1921. One, abrupt, complete cessation of the use of an addictive drug. Also, the symptoms experienced by a person undergoing withdrawal from a drug. So the act of stopping using something is called cold turkey, but then I guess the symptoms that you get from it uh, would also be called cold turkey. I don't know if I realized that part of it. Uh, number two, unrelieved blunt language or procedure. W- blunt language. So, like, you're talking to me. Oh, yeah, if, if you're, you're giving me the cold turkey, you're talking to me cold turkey, it's very blunt. I'm telling you how it is. Yeah. And then number three, a cold, aloof person. And uh, actually, <laughs> the last word in yesterday's episode was cold fish, and that is also a cold, aloof person. You you could be a turkey or a fish, and they're both cold. I wonder if there's another one. Probably not. Yeah, I don't think I would want to be called a turkey or a fish. Uh, Okay, a cold turkey with a hyphen is a transitive verb. I think that was more about stopping the drug. Second form of cold turkey, 
Still two words, adverb from 1941, all at once. Synonym is abruptly, as A, without a period of gradual adjustment, adaptation, or withdrawal, as in quit smoking cold turkey. And then B, without preparation, as in a new player who started the season cold turkey. I wonder where this came from. It doesn't give an etymology. Uh, cold, like why, 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 why turkey? I think the cold makes sense, but I don't understand the turkey part. Hmm. Yep. I'm not smart enough to figure that one out. Uh, can you imagine an alternate universe where it became some other word and then we'd be living in a universe where we were saying like cold, cold chicken, cold, cold fish, cold some other animal, cold kawati, cold butterfly. None of those make any sense. Okay, next is cold type. Two words, noun from 1949. Composition or typesetting, as photo composition, done without the casting of metal. Composition or typesetting, typesetting done without the casting of metal. Specifically, such composition produced directly on paper by a typewriter mechanism. Cold type. Why is it cold? Next is Cold War. Two words, noun from 1945. One, a conflict over ideological differences carried on by methods short of sustained overt military action and usually without breaking off diplomatic relations. Specifically, it is often capitalized. The C and the W are often capitalized. Uh, that This definition is... The ideological conflict between the U.S. and the USSR during the second half of the 20th century. Uh, so yes, first we had the general definition, which is basically uh, people sort of in war, but there's no weapons involved, is sort of what I understand it. Uh, no, no overt military action. Um, and then the second definition is specifically the U.S., the USSR. I was born, you know, at the end of that, so I... I'm not like terribly knowledgeable, um, but yes, we were going through a cold war for, for decades. Um, and then it says compared to the synonym, although I guess it would be the antonym hot war. So that would be more I probably where, where weapons are used, which are hot. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's interesting that it was coined in 1945. So, you know, the end of world war two before that, um, I guess, the, my, my thought process is that, you know, it was, what am I trying to say? We were able to go around the world and communicate, but it was, it was uh, a lot, a lot harder to do, I think, back in the, you know, 40s, 30s, 20s, 10s. Um, and so you couldn't really be connected, involved with other countries in as easily as, you know, post-1945. Um, so, you know, I don't think there was as much of possibility to have a Cold War before that. Or the other option is just that back then, if people didn't like other, if the country didn't like other country, they would just go to a hot war. I don't really know a whole lot about this. That's just, I'm just, I'm just thinking stuff off the top of my head. Okay, number two for Cold War, a condition of rivalry, riv rivalry, rivalry, mistrust, and often open hostility, short of violence, especially between power groups as labor and management. All right, next is cold warrior. Two words, noun from 1949. One that supports or is engaged in a cold war. So I guess a country could be a cold warrior, uh, but also a person could be, you know, if they're actively doing something to keep the cold war going, I guess they'd be a cold warrior. Next is cold water, two words, adjective from 1942. Oh, some cold water on a hot day. So good. Uh, this one is having only running water without heat or utility services provided, as in a cold water flat. Uh, flat. It's an apartment. Uh, having only running water without heat. You need hot water without heat or utility. So is it, so I guess that, that means that they don't include the heat or other utilities, but they include water? Maybe that's what it means. I don't know. Uh, next is cold water, two words, no hyphen. Noun from 1808. Depreciation of something as being ill-advised, unwarranted, or worthless, 
as in threw cold water on our hopes. Oh, yeah, sad. And then our last word in this episode, it is the last cold word. It is cold wave. Two words, noun from 1876. One, an unusually large and rapid drop in temperature over a short period of time, as 24 hours. And number two, a permanent wave set by a chemical preparation without the use of heat. Uh, okay, so the words today were cold frame, cold front, cold hearted, cold press, cold shoulder, cold sore, cold storage, cold store, cold sweat. <laughs> it's hard to say all these cold words. Cold turkey, cold type, cold war, cold warrior, cold water, cold water, and cold wave. Um... We've been watching the show Ted Lasso on Apple, and it's so, so good. Um, but there have been a couple of parts where he says a word so many times, he, he mentions how it loses meaning. And uh, what did they call it? Something satiation? Some, uh, anyway, uh, yes, uh, you know, that happens a lot when you read a whole bunch of words that are similar. But that's what cold is looking like to me now. Uh, what do I like of all these cold words? Hmm... I don't know. I guess the biggest and most important one is Cold War. Um, it's not a good one, but, uh, you know, it's it's something to be aware of and be knowledgeable knowledgeable about. Anyway, Cold War. Um, I don't know how to sing a song about Cold War. I remember when I was a kid and the USSR broke into smaller countries. I think that was the end of the Cold War. All right, let's talk about the holidays for today. September, uh, no, September 24th. I'm recording this on September 4th. Um, Peru has Armed Forces Day. Cambodia has Constitution Day. This is the earliest day on which Maple Leaf Day can fall. In what country do you think that's in? Yes, of course, it's Canada. In South Africa, it is Heritage Day. It is Independence Day in Guinea-Bissau, which is from Portugal in 1973. Y'all get a, get a history lesson, too, with this show. In Thailand, it is Mahadol Day. In New Caledonia, it is New Caledonia Day. In Trinidad and Tobago, is that how they say that? It is Republic Day. What are the holidays on this page? India has NSS Day. The Dominican Republic has Our Lady of Las Mercedes in Austria, it is St. Rupert. In Israel, it is Sukkot. Oh, that's the fourth day of Sukkot. In Bolivia, it is Holy Cross Day. And let's talk about some fun holidays, starting with something that I don't get, Festival of Latest Novelties. It is Gallbladder Good Health Day. Get your gallbladder checked out. It is German Butterbrot Day. Butterbrot I don't know. It shows a picture of somebody putting butter on bread, which is A-OK -okay with me. Oh, Hug a Vegetarian Day. It is also Kiss Day. Although, you know, with COVID still going around pretty badly, uh, maybe you don't want to hug and kiss random people. Oh, by the way, Hug a Vegetarian Day is also known as Hug a Vegan Day. So you, uh, that's me, but I don't know if I want to be hugged by any strangers. It is Lash Stylist's Day. Are there people whose job it is only to style lashes? Probably. It's love note day. Instead of uh, hugging people or kissing people, j maybe just give them a love note. It is National Bluebird of Happiness. It's National Brave Day, and brave is all caps, so it must stand for something. It is National Cherries Jubilee Day. In the UK, it is National Doodle Day. In, uh, I, I don't know why I said in, it's National Horchata Day. Ooh, if you've never had a horchata, you gotta get a horchata. It is this sweet, tasty rice drink. I think it's from Mexico. Oh, I don't get those enough. They are so tasty. Anybody wanna make me a horchata? Uh, it is National Punctuation Day. All right, I gotta give you a pet peeve of mine. With, with, with social media, with texting, with Twitter, all this stuff, I think people are losing the ability to use punctuation and spelling correctly but mostly punctuation and I, i'm sorry it just gets on my nerves i'm not a master with grammar i'm not a grammar master a gram master but please use periods at the very least 
and if you can use other punctuation, that would be even better. Uh, it is Native American Day. Yes. It is Save the Koala Day. Yes. It is... All right, this is interesting. It is Schwenkfelder Thanksgiving, and it is showing the same picture of butter... No, bread being buttered. Butter, buttered bean bread, bread or bird, bird, bird. Uh, so I don't know what that is. It is Sport Purple for Platelets Day. Uh, yeah, let's check this page quickly. Oh my God, are there more? Uh, AFL Grand Final Day. German Sandwich Day. Oh, maybe that was the uh, the butter brat. German Sandwich Day. Um, did I miss anything else? Oh, World Bollywood Day. I don't I don't know any Bollywood movies really, but uh, they make a lot a lot of movies. It's a big a big uh, industry over there. And then world's biggest coffee morning. Don't understand what that means, but okay. Uh, those are all the words. Those are all the holidays. Um, personal story time. Uh, I'm, well, I'm recording this on my wife's birthday today. So happy birthday, Sharon. Uh, we are we are having some fun tonight. We are going to go to a uh, a well known Chicago movie theater to watch David Lynch's movie Fire Walk with Me. Uh, it's a very adult movie. If you're a fan of Twin Peaks, you know what I'm talking about. It's a great movie. We've never seen it on the big screen. And afterwards, they're going to do a and a with two of the actors, uh, Cheryl Lee and Dana Ashbrook, Q&A, and a and then a meet and greet. And we are really excited to go meet them. Um, we are not excited to be around people, but we are obviously going to mask up. And uh, I don't know, should be fun. Anyway, that's all I got to say. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. This is my podcast. And uh, if um, if you are a fan of this podcast, uh, it would be really great because there's so few of you. Uh, it'd be great if you wrote a review and you can share it and subscribe. Go go tell the people about it and uh, leave a voicemail. The, the phone number is in the show notes. And you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DictionaryPod. All right, let's talk about the words. Uh, the first word is coal, C-O-L-E. And I think all of these words in this episode are going to start with either co or ka, depending on uh, the word and the pronunciation. So, coal, noun, from, before the 12th century. I want to say, I want to talk like Gordon Cole. Any of several brassicas, especially any of various crop plants. Now, I'm not going to keep on doing that. Uh, you you guys don't know Gordon Cole. But if you do, it's from Twin Peaks. Um, anyway, crop plants as broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, and kohl, kohlrabi. It's hard to see what that letter is. Yeah, that's an L. Kohlrabi. They are derived from the same wild cabbage. And the scientific name for that wild cabbage is Brassica oleracea. Oleracea. And what else do we have to say about this one? It is from Old English kal with a line over the A. No idea how to pronounce that. From the Latin caulis, which means stem or cabbage, akin to the Greek kaulos, which means stem from the Latvian, we don't usually see Latvian, uh, from their word kauls, K-A-U-L-S. So it's very clear where uh, cauliflower comes from uh, etymologically. Uh, but yes, there are all these things that are related. Broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, kohlrabi. All right, next is colmanite. Colmanite. Audrey, I just let you into the bedroom so you would stop running around out there so you could calm down and sleep, but now you want to get out of here? No, this is this is relaxy time. Okay, colmanite, noun from 1884. A colorless or white mineral consisting of a hydrous calcium borate occurring in monoclinic crystals. Uh, borate or borate, I'm not sure how to say that one. This is from William T. Coleman, who died in 1893 and was an American businessman and mine owner. So, uh, yeah, they, they found this uh, this white mineral in probably one of his mines, and he said, hey, you're going to name that after me because I'm a world-famous American businessman. All right, next we have Coleoptera. 
Coleoptera. All right, so before I read the definition, I'm going to take a guess at at least part of it. The uh, So it's C-O-L-E-O-P-T-E-R-A, and the patera at the end probably means wing, but I don't know what the rest of it means. So this is a noun from 1771. It is insects that are beetles. Insects that are beetles? Well, wouldn't they just be beetles? Are there beetles that are not insects? Interesting. Okay. Uh, let's look at the etymology. It is from Greek kolion, which means sheath, plus pteron, or just pteron, which means wing. And there's more at the word feather. So the wings are in a sheath. And yeah, I guess if you think about the beetles, when you see them open up their wings, they have a covering. It's like their back is a covering, a hard covering, and then the wings are underneath. Um, and so uh, I'm thinking like ladybugs, those are like that too. So those must be these uh, coleop- col- coleopterans. That's what I'm, I'm guessing. And there's a, there's a bunch of these. But why does it say just insects? Are, are they just trying to be extra specific? Otherwise, it would just say beetles. Beetles. Uh, okay. Coleopterist is a noun. That's probably the one who studies them. Coleopterist with an O-U-S at the end, that is an adjective. Oh, that coleoptera, it is so coleopterous. I'm gonna be a coleopterist. Okay, next is coleopterin, with an N, noun from circa 1847. And we have the number one definition for the first form of the word beetle. So yeah, beetles. Uh, Coleopterin is also an adjective. Relatedly, next we have coleoptile, coleoptile, and at the end it is T-I-L-E, noun from circa 1866, the first leaf, we'll see now I don't know if it's related, uh, the first leaf of a monocotyledon forming a protective sheath about the plumule. <laughs> okay, fun words in this one, monocotyledon. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. It is spelled M-O-N-O-C-O-T-Y-L-E-D-O-N. Monocotyledon. Um, And the plumule plumule is P-L-U-M-U-L-E. So, yes, we do still have the sheath thing. That's where the uh, the colio comes from. Uh, This is from the Greek kolion plus... Oh, it's a different suffix. The suffix is P T. I L O N. That is the Greek patilon or patilon. Patilon. Uh, that means down. So sheath and down. Uh, the first leaf of a monocle forming a protective sheath about the plumule. I'd, it must be a plants, plant related. All right. Next we have another colio word. It is coleoriza. Coleoriza, and the suffix is R H I Z A. Noun from circa 1866. The sheath. Investing the radical in some mono, oh, there's that word again, monocotyledonous plants through which the roots emerge. Mm, and then radical, by the way, is R A D I C L E. Uh, so, yeah, I'm sort of envisioning uh, sometimes, yeah, when they're growing the roots or something, it sort of looks like it's coming out of a, of a, a larger piece, a sheath, I guess. Um, so, yeah, you plant people love these words. Yeah, this is from uh, Greek kolion plus the new Latin riza or riza. Uh, it doesn't say specifically what that means, but it's something with the plants. All right, next we have we're we're taking a a 180 a 180 degree turn here. Uh, it, it is the word coleslaw, <laughs> noun from 1794, a salad made of raw sliced or chopped cabbage and oh my god i just realized where this word comes from it's coal it's our first word from this episode the broccoli kale brussels sprouts cabbage cauliflower kohlrabi uh that is that is what it is it's the slaw of the coal stuff uh more specifically it is from the dutch word kulsla huh kulsla uh from their word cool k-o-o-l which means cabbage see we i mean we sort of learned that before plus Slaw, which means salad. So it's not even slaw. It's it's literally uh, cabbage salad. 
cabbage salad. Uh, but then, you know, we just, uh, because their, their, their second word there, slaw, sla, however they say it, we just turned into slaw. Huh. So now you can go talk to your friends about some interesting trivia that you learned where coleslaw comes from. I know I'm going to tell people later today. All right, next we have coleus, C-O-L-E-U-S, noun from 1885, any of a large genus of old world herbs of the mint family, including ones cultivated for their colorful foliage. And this is uh, back to the sheath word, the Greek coleos or coleon, which means sheath. Next, we have colwort, C-O-L-E-W-O-R-T, colwort or colwort, noun from the 14th century, and the synonym is just the word col, uh, especially one, as kale, that forms no head. So it is a kind of coal plant, like kale often, uh, that has no head. So would, so would broccoli or cauliflower have a head, but then kale because it's just leaves, it's uh, there's there's no head, there's no like thing. It's just leaves, I guess. Okay, moving on to a prefix, coli, c o l i, and it is, it just says c c o l prefix, uh, which is on this page. It was just a few episodes ago, um, which is funny. If you go to the first form of that prefix, it says c c o m, <laughs> so it just takes you to, to another place. Um, but then. There is a second form of that prefix, which means uh, either colon or E. coli, but I don't know which form this one is sending us to. Oh, yeah, I think it must be the E. coli one because it's coli. Anyway, next word, colic. No, this is colic, C-O-L-I-C. First form, noun from the 15th century. Two semi-long definitions. Number one, an attack of acute abdominal pain localized in a hollow organ and often caused by spasm, obstruction, or twisting. Oh, I hate it when my hollow organs twist. Number two, a condition marked by recurrent episodes of prolonged and uncontrollable crying and irritability in an otherwise healthy infant that is of unknown cause and usually subsides after three to four months of age. I have no idea if I was a colicky kid. We are going to get to colicky in a bit. Um, so why why do we have two like kind of different uh, definitions for this? Let's look at the etymology. From Middle Latin colica, and then in parentheses it says passio, and this is intestinal. Ah, okay, so colica means intestinal, and then passio means suffering. Intestinal suffering. From the Lower Latin Colicos, uh, colicus, which is of the colon, or colicky, pl- uh, from the Greek kolikos, which is from colon, which is an alternative of colon. Let's see, one has an, a line, one does not have a line, uh, and that means colon. So it's from the colon, which is a hollow organ. But again, how did we get to this whole three to four little kid crying thing? I'm not sure. Okay, second form of colic, adjective from the 15th century, of or relating to colic. And then the synonym is colicky, as in colic crying. Third form of colic, uh, this could also be colic, adjective from 1615, of or relating to the colon, as in colic lymph nodes. Lymph nodes. Um, yeah, okay. Moving on to colicin. Uh, you could also do colicine if you put an E at the end. Colicin, colicine. Noun from 1946. Any of various antibacterial substances produced by strains of intestinal bacteria as of E. coli. Again, stay away from the E. coli. So this is French colicine um, from col plus scene as in streptomycin. Yeah, there you go. Next is colicky, adjective from 1742, one relating to or associated with colic, as in colicky pain. Sometimes, even as an adult, I feel 
colicky. Number two, suffering from colic, as in colicky babies. I, I'm still so curious on where this came from exactly. Uh, just the baby crying that's healthy and you don't know why. Ah, they're colicky. They'll get over it. Okay, next is colic root. One word, noun from 1833. Any of several plants having roots used in folk medicine to treat colic, especially either of two bitter herbs of the lily family. And the scientific names for those bitter roots, no, bitter herbs, are Eletris farinosa and Eletris aurea. Aurea, aurea, yeah. So they treated colic, which was, uh, yeah, got got the pains in the, in the abdomens. All right, next is coliform or coliform. Either one is okay, I guess. This is an adjective from 1906 of relating to or being gram-negative rod-shaped bacteria, as E. coli, normally present in the intestine, as in monitored coliform levels in drinking water. Got to stay hydrated. I got to drink some water. I didn't have a whole lot of water yesterday, so I got some water next to me. Uh, and then coliform is also a noun. And then our last word is collinear. Co, C O L I N E A R. Collinear. Collinear. Adjective from 1927. Number one, the synonym is collinear with two L's. Uh, yeah. And then number two, having corresponding parts arranged in the same linear order, as in. A gene, G-E-N-E, -E, a gene and the protein it determines are collinear. Collinearity is a noun. Okay, the words today were col, colmanite, coleoptera, coleopterin, coleoptil, cole, yeah, that's how you say it, coleoptil, coleoriza, coleslaw, coleus, colwort, cole. Colic, 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 or colic, colicine, colicky, colic root, coliform, and collinear. Hmm. Well, hmm, I think, I mean, I have never really been a big coleslaw fan, but the etymology was great. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, the cabbages and, and stuff like that are pretty healthy for you. So I think this is actually a good thing. As long as you're not putting too much... Un was it made with mayo or something like that? I don't even know. Um, but yeah, uh, as long as you don't got really unhealthy stuff in there, it's actually a pretty good a pretty good thing. Coleslaw. Let's have that be the word of the episode. And we say we're going to sing. You sing. Coleslaw, coleslaw, make some coleslaw from cabbage. All right, let's talk about the holidays. Um, in Mozambique, it is Armed Forces Day or Revolution Day. In France, it is Day of National Recognition for the Harkis, H-A-R-K-I-S. Uh, in the U.S., it is National Research Administrators Day. In Nauru, it is National Youth Day. And let's look at this page. I, I still don't understand why these pages have such different lists of holidays, because sometimes they're the same, but... Look it, we also have National Comic Book Day. That's probably in the fun holidays. National One Hit Wonder Day. Um, uh, let's see, let's see, anything else? Now see, this says the sixth day of Sukkot, but then here it says Sukkot 5. I don't get it. it also in France, it is appointment sport health well-being. Uh, also in France, is this? Oh yeah, that's the other, that's the one that we already read. And let's look at more fun holidays. It is binge day. So I, I would assume that's talking about binging a, a show or a movie series. But maybe don't binge food or alcohol or things because that is so not healthy for you. It is Family Health and Fitness Day USA. That's what it says. Go be, go do some fitnessing with your family. Um, it is Fish Amnesty Day, International Ataxia Awareness Day. You can go back to, oh, I don't know, episode way long time ago in the A's to hear me talk about ataxia, probably. 
It is International Lace Day, and it shows a picture of a of an umbrella made of lace. Part of it is opaque, so it's like there's something underneath the lace, but I don't think I would want an umbrella made out of lace. It's not going to do so much good good work. It's not going to do so much good work. Um, it is International Rabbit Day. Uh, and it shows a picture of the cutest little bunny rabbit, little baby bunny rabbit. Oh, my God. It is Kiwanis Kids' Day. Math Storytelling Day. What stories can you tell with math? Probably lots. It is Museum Day. I have not been to a museum in a while. Um, it is, oh, we said National Comic Book Day. I was never really a big comic book person, but they are fun. National Cooking Day. National... Crab Meat Newberg Day, uh, National Food Service Employees Day. Thank you for making our food employees, food service employees. We do appreciate that. National Ghost Hunting Day. Ooh, ooh, we should do some ghost hunting. National Hunting and Fishing Day, National Lobster Day, uh, National Psychotherapy Day, National Public Lands Day, National Quesadilla Day. Ooh, National Research Administrator Day. We said that. National Seat Check Saturday. Uh, I guess that's checking. It shows a kid in a car seat, so go check your car seat uh, just in case it's getting loose. Uh, National Singles Day. National Tune-Up Day. Why are there so many holidays today? Get your tune-up in your car. Uh, National Wildlife Ecology Day. R-E-A-D in America Day. Read in America. It probably stands for something. Save your photos day. I do save all my photos. World dream day. World pharmacist day. Oh, now we have to check this page. Why? Okay, scrolling. Oh, national daughter's day. Why wasn't that on the other one? Daughters are important. Cool. I think we got them all. Thank you very much for listening. We finished page 242. And uh, that's all I got to say to you. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Top of page 243. Our first word in this episode is colophage or colophage. C-O-L-I-P-H-A-G-E. I will say colophage. Noun from 1944. Any bacteriophage or phage active against E. coli. So, that is the stuff in your colon, and it tries to stop the E. coli, and hopefully it works, I think. Next is Colosseum, noun from circa 1715. One, uh, if you capitalize it, oh, so this one is spelled C-O-L-I-S-E-U-M, so the synonym is the number one definition for the word Colosseum, spelled C O L O S S E U M. We will see that later. Number two, a large sports stadium or building designed like the Coliseum for public entertainments. Next is Callistin or Colistin. Uh, this is a noun from 1951. A polymixin produced by a bacterium from Japanese soil. Uh, and the bacterium scientific name is Bacillus polymixa. And then there's a variation that says colistinus, I guess. Uh, this is from the New Latin colistinus, which is a specific epithet of the bacterium producing it. No idea what any of that means. Next is colitis or colitis, K ca or co. Noun from circa 1860, this is inflammation of the colon. You do not want this. Next is a prefix. It is C-O-L-L or C-O-L-L-O. I guess you just say coal. Um, it means, number one, glue, as in colenchyma. Did I have this word before? C O L L E N C H Y M A. Colenchyma. Number two, it means colloid, as in colotype. Uh, let's see, it's from Greek, col or cola, which uh, it just says there's more at the word protocol. 
that doesn't help. Next, we have collaborate and listen. This is a verb from 1871. I believe it is just an intransitive verb. Number one, to work jointly with others or together, especially in an intellectual endeavor. So intellectual. Number two, to cooperate with or willingly assist. I said that bad. To cooperate with or willingly assist an enemy of one's country and especially an occupying force. Number three, to cooperate with an agency or instrumentality with which one is not immediately connected. Collaboration is a noun. Collaborative is an adjective or a noun. Collaboratively is an adverb. And collaborator is a noun. The etymology from the lower Latin collaboratus. Although, do they? No, I don't think so. Uh, that is from the verb collaborare, which means to labor together, working together. That's what that means. Uh, that's from the Latin com plus laborare, which means to labor. Uh, and there's more at the word labor. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you, you look at the middle of the word right there. The word labor is in there. Working together. Uh, working together and com, I think that means, yeah, I think that means with, or I think, no, see in Spanish, con with an N means with, but maybe in Latin it means com with, means with, I'm not sure, but that's, it's working together. That's what it is all about. But then it's funny how the, uh, the M went away and it just became an L. Okay. Next we have, it's a fun word, collaborationism collaborationism noun from 1923 the advocacy or practice of collaboration with an enemy see yeah we saw that in the last one you you can collaborate with an enemy or you can just collaborate to make something good with with people uh collaborationist is an adjective or a noun next is collage you collage collage however you want to say it Noun from 1919, 1A, an artistic composition made of various materials as paper, cloth, or wood glued on a surface. And, you know, those are just examples of the materials. You can use a whole lot of other things. Uh, you could also make, uh, it can all be digital. I was given an assignment in a digital animation class to make a, a collage thing. So I did that. Um, 1B, a creative work that resembles such a composition in incorporating various materials or elements, as in, the album is a collage of several musical styles. Yeah, music. That's another one. You can collage music together. Number two, the art of making collages. If any of you have made some collages, go ahead and post it and tag me on the social media, because I could, I could see it then. Number three, the synonym is hodgepodge, as in a collage of ideas. I think my brain is a collage of things that are not collaborating. Number four, a work as a film having disparate scenes in rapid succession without transitions. Collage is a transitive verb and collagist is a noun. The one who is making the collages. Uh, this is French, and it literally means gluing. So, you, you know, you're sticking a bunch of stuff together, and that makes a collage. That is from colère, to glue. From col, that's, this is all still French, which means glue. That's good. Okay, next is, I think this is probably also maybe going to mean glue. No, I don't know. Um, it is the word collagen, noun from circa 1865. Any of a group of fibrous proteins that occur in vertebrates as the chief constituent of connective tissue fibrils and in bones and yield gelatin and glue upon boiling with water. And collagenous, collagenous, that is an adjective. Uh, so, yeah, this is uh, it's the stuff in your body that is the stuff with the tissues and the bones. And, yeah, if you didn't know... Uh, this is terrible. They do this with horses usually, but I think cows too. 
um, they break up their bones and they boil them with water, I guess, and it makes gelatin. And you know what they use gelatin in? Uh, jelly beans and marshmallows and things like that. Um, jello? Did I say jello? I don't know. I don't think I did. But yeah, uh, this got you got some animal bones and stuff in in gelatin. Moving on, on that note, to collagenous, uh, no, collagenase, or collagenase, with a Z, or collagenase, or collagenase, nase. Uh, This is a noun from 1926, any, of a group of proteolytic, proteolytic enzymes that decompose collagen and gelatin. So it's some kind of enzyme that decomposes collagen collagen and gelatin and i'm assuming that it was it would be a naturally occurring thing but i have no idea uh okay we are actually on our last word of the episode it is collapse c-o-l-l-a-p-s-e this is the first form and the second form will be in the next episode collapse is a verb from 1732 we got a bunch of definitions we are starting with intransitive one To fall or shrink together abruptly and completely. Fall into a jumbled or flattened mass through the force of external pressure. As in, a blood vessel that collapsed. Uh, That actually has happened to me on multiple occasions. They're trying to give me an IV of some kind and the blood vessel collapses. And then they got to stick me again and that one collapses. And it's not fun, especially when you you don't like getting stuck with needles. But here's a trick. Uh, Be hydrated if you can. Drink lots and lots of water. That might make it easier. Um, Yeah. Number two, to break down completely. Synonym is disintegrate. As in, his case had collapsed in a mass of legal wreckage. And that is a quote from Earl Stanley Gardner. And Earl is E-R-L-E. Number three for collapse, to cave or fall in or give away, as in the bridge collapsed. That is a tragedy. Number four, to suddenly lose force, significance, effectiveness, or worth, as in fears that the currency may collapse. Uh, That would be a problem. That has happened. The the, the, The money loses value. It's just that's collapsing. Ah, okay, number five, to break down in vital energy, stamina, or self-control through exhaustion or disease, especially to fall helpless or unconscious. Uh, this happens to marathon runners a lot, I think. They are just so drained of everything that they just collapse, either after they've crossed the finish line, hopefully, or before they've crossed the finish line. Uh, number six, to fold down into a more compact shape. As in, a chair that collapses. I love collapsible chairs and tables and bikes and stuff. Okay, now we've got transitive. Just a couple. Number one, to cause to collapse. As in, buildings collapsed by an earthquake. Number two, the synonym is condense. As in, collapse several stories into one. Mm. I guess, would that be stories like in a book or stories in a building? I don't know. Could be either, I guess. Collapsibility is a noun and collapsible is an adjective. Uh, This is from the Latin word collapsus, which is from the verb collabi, which is com plus labi, and that means to fall or slide. And there's more at the word sleep. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so, uh, in full honesty, I had to take a break in the middle of this one, uh, so I have to remind myself what the previous words were. Uh, We had colophage, coliseum, colistin, colitis, colitis, bad, bad, colitis is bad, col, collaborate, collaborationism, collage, collagen, collagenase, and collapse. I am going to pick collaborate as the word of the episode. I don't know I don't know the lyrics to that song. I just know 
I think it's just collaborate and listen. Yep, that is what you get. Um, so that was sort of a song. Let's talk about the holidays. In Ecuador, it is Day of the National Flag. In New Zealand, it is Dominion Day. In the European Union, it is European Day of Languages. So many languages are spoken in the European Union. I wonder how many it is. I'll take a guess and say, hmm. See, there's a lot of sub-languages that aren't, uh, you know, not ones that everybody knows about. So let's, let's just take a guess and say, I don't know, 30 to 50. I would say 30 to 50 languages in the European Union. Uh, in the U.S., it is National Good Neighbor Day. In Yemen, it is Revolution Day. Uh, let's see. Anything on this one? Oh, okay. So uh, yesterday on one of the pages, I think it was one of the fun holiday pages, it said it was National Daughters Day. But this says National Daughters Day. And I think this other page says National Daughters Day. So yesterday was wrong on that page. Um, it is Gold Star Mother's Day. I think... I think if you're a mother, you should just deserve a gold star for just being a mother in the first place. Ooh, National Pancake Day. International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons. Uh, good luck with that. Let's try. Uh, it is uh, Daylight Saving Starts in New Zealand. India has Daughter's Day. Uh, India also has World Deaf Day. But why would you say India, but it's World Deaf Day? It's just all over the world. Um, let's check the fun holiday page. Yeah, yeah, here it says Daughter's Day. European Day of Languages. We said that. We said that. Human Resource Professional Day. Johnny Appleseed Day. Lumberjack Day. Mesothelioma. That's not how you say that word. Mesothelioma. Meso... That... I feel like I'm saying it wrong. Mesothelioma Day. Mesothelioma Awareness Day. National Better Breakfast Day. Well, you know, it is it is National Pancake Day, so that would make a breakfast better to some people. National Compliance Officer Day. National Dumpling Day. I want those. Uh, National Situational Awareness Day. You gotta be aware of the situation that you're in. Shamu the Whale Day. The Last of Us Day. World Rivers Day. All the rivers in the world. Um, okay, uh, any other fun holidays? Family, health, and fit. See, that was, I think, yesterday. Why are these all off a day? It is Hoshana Rabbah. That looks like a Jewish holiday. Ooh, National Chimichanga Day. National Family Day. Yep, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye.